Good afternoon, folks. <laughs> Fish little, little, little right there. Hello and welcome to Hint Plays. I am Nightbites and I'll be your games master this afternoon. Hint Plays is a channel for RPGs and tabletop gaming from Hobby Gamers International. We run games on a, a three week rotation with a rotating cast of players and game masters. And on occasion, do specials where we look at new games and play online board games and chat about all things gaming. T today, I'm running Crimson Skies, which is a a homebrew um, hack of the Savage Worlds rule set, set in Fassa's Crimson Skies universe. And our players are the crew of a uh, an airship called the... Shit, I've forgotten the name. <laughs> the Bad Debt, there we go. One of those times where the brain just goes, nope, nothing happening. Our players are the crew of the Bad Debt and have been set a task to find a sunken American Civil War warship, which they found and have salvaged some bits and pieces from. The cover for this was a series of air races which have just started, the first race having been completed with a very nail-biting finish. So let's introduce our players and who they are playing. Starting with Drutt. Hello, I am Drutt Cup. I am playing Madonna, real name Masha, uh, who is ostensibly flight commander of the Bad Debt means all the pilots come under my purview and general command um, although I give orders to the captain of the airship because I can't fly and them they're too slow um, I have been guiding the finding of the airship uh, of the ship we're looking for and I'm slightly disappointed because we've not found what we've been tasked to find but we've found a bucket load of gold which has really helped take the sting off Fish. Hello, I am Fish Not Fish, or just Fishy, and I am playing Chuck Shackleford, call sign Midas, uh, also known to his parents as Charles Clark Quigley, but he changed his name because both of his parents were famous and he, he, he wanted to make a, a career based on being himself and being an ace pilot, not based on having faith. Jack is kind of an annoying guy, really, but he is the best pilot you're ever going to meet, so that's really all you need to worry about. And I don't know quite what all this fuss is. People keep going on about a boat, something. I don't know what that's about. I'm just flying a plane. We've got some air races. We did the first one. I won it. That's all anybody needs to know about that. Okay, maybe some other people crashed, and maybe I was a little bit low on fuel at the end, but I won. That's the important thing, okay? That's all we need to know. <laughs> Thank you, Fish. <laughs> Robinson. Uh, hello, I'm Robinson. I'm playing Merlin, whose real name apparently has been so forgotten by everyone else that I'm not even going to bother mention it anymore. He has a name? Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently. Uh, he is the uh, lead mechanic on board the Bad Jet and generally puts things together in ways that shouldn't be, but are more interesting. Should not be. And Shard. Hey, I'm Shard Angel. I'm playing Dr. Uttercup, who is one of the finest doctors in all of Crimson's guys. And her patients are often very happy afterwards because there's plenty of alcohol to numb any of the pain. <clears throat> and they're not dead, so that's a plus. <clears throat> and I think last we left off, she is landing the uh, gyro and rushing towards the crash. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that was a crash at the end of the episode. Oh yeah, it was a bad Ooh. one. That was the cliffhanger. Yes, so for once the cliffhanger didn't affect immediately any one of the crew of the Bad Debt, but one of uh, Chuck's um, racing opponents, who having been chasing Chuck hard through most of the race, also ran out of fuel, as Chuck did, but lost control of the plane on landing, cartwheeling it into um, one of the buildings. So we pick up the action. Chuck just landed his plane and is stepping out. Dr. Uttercup is jumping into the uh, gyrocopter aboard the Bad Debt. Oh, no, we were already, because... Um... Merlin was with me. We were already flying down there and waiting because uh, Midas was Midas running low on fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so we were there waiting for Midas to crash and it was someone else. So we were close by enough to be able to land it 
near the crash. Just a case of the wrong patient. <laughs> As opposed to the English patient. The half English patient. <laughs> so. I need to mute my phone because apparently I left it on not it's silent. A... Bear with me one That's second. A good point. There we go. So, mechanics, medical personnel, uh, Dr. Uttercup, and possibly Merlin, tearing across the... Uh... And Midas, I did say at the end of the last one. And Midas te the tearing he across... Running over to, to try and help the apron. Well. Yes. Tearing across the apron. There's wreckage strewn in a fairly wide area. The tail section's over there, there's bits of a wing over there and over there. And largely all that's left is the the cigar section of the fuselage. So cockpit, engine, no propellers, they've broken off and the long since disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> On the plus side, he probably didn't have any more fuel than I did, so maybe it won't go up in flames. <laughs> no, 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 this is an action setting, it has to explode regardless. Irrespective, that's the law. My oily rag connect collection. <laughs> On the plus side, with most aircraft, a lot of fuel is housed in the wings, and they are nowhere near where the cockpit <laughs> is right now. They're merely burning somewhere else. Yes. Yeah, that's a plus. Yeah, it's someone like, in... Um... Yeah, just, just over there, next to the fuel tanks that they use for refueling the planes. It's all good. <laughs> uh, it's next to the bar where all the liquor's stored. Yeah. No, that, that would be a tragedy. We need to drag that away from there immediately. <laughs> Get a fire extinguisher. So if everyone is running across, can I have athletics rolls from anyone that is desperate to be there first? Uh, yeah. I'm not desperate to be there first, but I'll be an athletics roll anyway. I have no great athletics, by the way. Oh, hey, nice. Holy crap! What? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is the this that's is quite impressive on a D4. <laughs> so, Did you see how many times the four water. roll? <laughs> wow, that's a lot <laughs> on the D4. That is so. I, I rolled a seventeen. I mean, I guess <laughs> medical emergencies are important to Doctor Edicup. Apparently so. Yes. You are not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really impressive roll for a D4 athletic skill. So, so <laughs> everyone except me has managed to explode. Um, the dice, that is, not them <laughs> in character. Uh, yes, yes. Um, Dr. Uttercup was hit by a flying wing and the fuel ignited and boom, Dr. Uttercup's exploded. Yep. <laughs> Man doesn't care about the patient. He went straight to the engine and that was his downfall. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, in all seriousness, Merlin, did you say Merlin's gone to the engine? Yes. Okay. I, I feel mean, odd, though, that you're, not, you're describing explode, that as not the know. patient. <laughs> I thought from your point of view, the engine was the patient. That is yeah. a, a fair and valid point, yes. Also, he did, he did do a lot of work trying to save an NPC. Think about it. People meet heels up. Metal doesn't, therefore needs more attention, therefore is a more serious patient. <laughs> <laughs> can't actually fault the logic on that, really. No, you can't. And that, that is pretty good logic, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I... by a sheer miracle of running lightning fast, <laughs> Dr. Wally West Uttercup. Yeah, <laughs> Wilhelmina West. <laughs> sprints across the apron um, already climbing in the process of climbing out of the smoking smouldering and sparking through bits of electrics that have come apart all over the place is the pilot they try to stand up and immediately their legs just buckle underneath them and they fall flat on the floor Fall, uh, they fall on the floor outside of the cockpit. Yep. That's better than yep. falling on the floor inside the cockpit. I'm I the am there and basically trying to lay them out flat on their back and check for broken... I'm medicing the shit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure they can breathe. 
checking their eyes because there's got to be concussion going on with the way that that plane was spinning. Brains don't like that shit. Okay, tell me about it. <laughs> okay, give me a medicine <laughs> roll. Twelve. Okay. Um, yes. Um, suspect you would, but based on sort of initial proddings, a they're breathing, they're conscious. Um, pupils are dilated. They're incredibly dazed. Um, based on the winds of pain and the way they moved, and then had pain again, you would guess broken ribs. Miraculously, legs and arms seem intact. Uh, anything more than that, you'd probably need um, to get them to a hospital and all the facilities yeah. there. Um, there's nothing in terms of spinal injury other than bruising and whatnot. There's no, nothing broken in the neck or the legs. I, I, only broken ribs. Ne neck seems... I mean, it's difficult to tell without x-ray and such, but then next, we, neck we seems okay. Legs moving, and arms seem okay. Moving would be a thing. Um... How is the gyro set up for carrying people? I know it can fit two people, but it's not set up with like a stretcher or being able to carry things, is it? No, it's it's. Uh, we don't have any specific medical no. uh, evac gear, do we? we Something don't. that we're going to need to get Merlin to work on, I think, for the future. Yes. Um, this was pretty spectacular, and the outlying folk. Because uh, with a race like this, there would be ambulances nearby. Yeah, and there's one tearing up the, the hardcore yeah. now. I'm going to keep his neck up and make sure that his airway stays open. And I'm going to talk to him and get him to try and respond and talk to keep him awake. Because you got to keep people with concussions awake until other things. So I'm waiting for them and making sure that he's as comfortable as possible. Okay. Um, they're fairly... Um incomprehensible um it sounds like they're trying to say something but the words are coming out gibberish yeah that makes sense <laughs> so long as they're talking it doesn't matter if they're saying anything legible <laughs> uh, as, as the ambulance then screeches to a halt um a couple of guys jump out grab a stretcher and immediately head in your direction Uh, you got here quick. Um, <laughs> how is he? He has a concussion, probably a severe concussion. His ribs are broken. Um, his limbs seem to be okay, but we need to get him to a hospital to take care of him properly. Well, while this conversation is taking place, Midas is on the other side of the, the patient saying, you know, I think you're going to need a new plane. <laughs> 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 will you be at, at the paramedics talking to um, Dr. Atticott will you be accompanying um, I, I don't oh, yes. even know their name who, who, who? Uh, you, this, the person's name or mine the, 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 the patient's mm. name I don't know which one it was. Was it Dale or something? Yes, uh, it was Dale McKinney. Dale, yeah, I got it right. Well, Are you going to be accompanying them? Yes. Okay. Um, they, they Minus, you're, you're not injured, right? You're okay? No, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Ah, uh, yeah, you're still talking. That makes sense. <laughs> Fish, you might want to do the um, flicky thing with the camera. Right. <laughs> So that they very carefully um, manoeuvre Dale onto the stretcher and get them into the ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, and then offer you a seat in the ambulance and proceed to tear off to mm -hmm. the hospital. Yep, I'm sitting next to him, holding his hand and continuing to talk to him. Cool. Um, so in the back with you and Dale is one of the paramedics who's proceeding to um, basically do everything you've already done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the paramedics don't know that you're a doctor, don't know that you've done all that stuff. 
I mean, I've got my doctor bag with me, but it doesn't look like... It looks like, you know, one of those house-to-house -house doctor bags. It's not got any symbols or anything on yeah. it. You wear a coat <laughs> not wearing a white coat. You should wear a white coat at all times so they can tell. Yes. <laughs> no, I prefer the brown and black leathers that I'm wearing, thank you very much, because I'm also a pilot. But you can have white coat over leather, or you can have a white leather coat. Yeah. Hmm, maybe I or should think the leather of a style over the white coat. Yeah. Actually, you know, that's a good idea. Next time, I'll have to get a, a, a leather jacket designed with a red cross on the back made out of white leather. <laughs> yeah, but then people will think that you're just a part of a... Um, Biker gang. An air security firm <laughs> called the Crusaders. <laughs> <laughs> that's a brilliant idea. I'll make a note of that. Yes. Bellow Templar. <laughs> um, the... Maybe... That Simon Templar runs an air security firm. <laughs> ah. all, all the planes have the picture of a stick mare with a halo. Yeah. Why do I have an urge to create a character called Simone Templar? <laughs> For when Masha eventually face plants a wall. <laughs> yeah, when something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, the, the paramedic um, goes to loosen their flight jacket and give them a bit more room to breathe. And the, although yeah. um, they're not making any kind of coherent speech at all, they do grab the paramedic's arm to stop them doing exactly that. For removing the jacket? So, back at the wrecked aircraft. Fish. Um, the, the aircraft is totaled. There's yeah. bits all over the place. Um, this isn't something that five minutes or even a few hours during uh, maintenance day tomorrow is going to get this thing airborne again. It's a write-off. Definitely going to need a new plane. Now, if I remember rightly, uh, Dale was one of the independents, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought they were. And flying a huge Bloodhawk. Mm. And as I recall from the fact that they were coming in directly behind me and nearly beat me, uh, a damn good pilot. So... Mm. Independent damn good pilot, no longer in possession of a plane. I think we may have a rec potential recruit there after yes. this is all over. <laughs> we need more good pilots. Yeah, we need more planes. At the moment, we can afford more planes. Yeah, well, we can afford to get a plane and hire mm. Dale to fly it. I, I, I will draw your attention to the fact that your hangar is currently full. We would have to get rid of the crap hey, duster. Yeah, hey, keep it. yeah, good point. We can replace the crap duster. We can trade that in on the new plane. Uh, or buy a new Zeppelin. Or buy a new. You know, <laughs> we, we could also we could also buy a new Zeppelin, or we can also get a hangar somewhere to store planes that we're not using. No, 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 no. Hangar we, comes with us. Could we buy a new Zeppelin and tell the holding company that owns the bad debt to get stuffed? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> we could. Could we buy a Zeppelin that's as cool as the Brits? I don't think we have that much gold. <laughs> we could buy a Zeppelin that has room to be upgraded to be as cool. We might, we might be able to get a, a Zeppelin as cool as the Brits if it was, say, um, second user and slightly damaged in, in need of repair. Let me just think about this. <laughs> <laughs> I like the implication. I, I know exactly what you're doing. Just, just remember, the Brit Zeppelin only carries four aircraft. You have more hangar space than they do. That's true, but their hangar space is so much cooler than ours. It's also on the outside. Wait, it literally they mean, hang the aircraft. It's, it's, I'm not heated. Can we just pick <laughs> two Zeppelins and like merge them together in the air and make a bigger one? Hey, on, it's, it's an American tradition. Can we have a stretch Zeppelin? <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm now imagining a pod racing Zeppelin. <laughs> no, no, it's got to be a combiner Zeppelin. I think a pod racing Zeppelin would be the cheapest form of Zeppelin. It's literally just the, um, the balloon with a, a simple gondola hung underneath <laughs> and then chained up to a couple of planes to tow it along. <laughs> What's the market for gun jobs airplanes? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> oh my. So yes, um, Fish, this, this one aircraft 
is not coming ba coming back into the race, not, even yeah. if, by some miracle, Dale is cleared for flying. Yeah. At the moment, they do not have a plane. Well, well that did not that go according to plan, did it? The voice behind you says, "No." That means it's just you and me. Is that by any chance Abelard? It is. What do you mean, just you and me? Last time I checked, you didn't even finish. I still got further than everyone else. Not everyone. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Third place is still pretty damn good, and close enough to chase you. Yeah, well, you keep telling yourself that. Third place, second fastest loser. I mean, <laughs> even... <laughs> <laughs> Even if you are in a position to chase me like you seem to think you are, aren't you still worried about the mysterious conspiracy that's sabotaging you or trying to kill you or whatever the heck it was? Yep, like the people that didn't put enough fuel in my plane. I think you'll find they're called ground crew and they put the fuel in that you tell them to. <laughs> <laughs> they they didn't fill the that. tank like I told them to. Or maybe you just pissed them off. Did you forget to tip? Is that the problem here? Maybe that's what it is, yes. Yeah. Or maybe it's just that you're, frankly, pretty damn annoying. That's also possible, too. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to say that I want to kill you, but, yeah, I'd quite like it if you went away and left me alone right now. Just keep looking over your shoulder. I'll be there. Well, I do, I do like to look over my shoulder on occasion, but I do find that sometimes it distracts me from being able to win races. That's what I'm counting on. Good job I got mirrors, huh? Have a good sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> Ready for the bar. Then drink as much as you can. <laughs> Makes it easier for me tomorrow. Yeah, you're gonna need all the help you can get. <laughs> Never draw a fly faster than I can fly. Yeah, I can like sing, it's all in the reflexes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Abelard heads off into the um, the hangars. There's a flurry of um, press people with uh, camera flashes going off all over the place. And a couple of them asking for interviews with you as the winner of the race, and your camera's gone slideshow again. I... damn it. Hang on. Apparently it's camera shot. Definitely not. <laughs> However... You know, I would love to give you an interview but I got things to do because I haven't actually won all I've done is just come first in this initial leg there's still other events that have that I have to win and I have to make sure that my plane is in perfect condition for tomorrow so you know I got to oversee maintenance and refueling and all that kind of thing so I would love to talk to you but come back when I win the next one maybe we'll talk then but, but Mr. Shackleford maintenance day is tomorrow you've got time to talk to us now surely how do you feel about the crashed aircraft and their pilot well, I'm glad that it wasn't me, but obviously it's a real shame. Uh, Dale's a damn good pilot. Very nearly beat me on this one, so I I'm really disappointed. Uh, I'm very sorry for Dale, and, and disappointed that we won't be facing each other in the in the future races because it's nice to have a challenge, you know. And Dale definitely was that, and will be again. When they get out of hospital and get a new plane, but not for this event, obviously. And any words to your competitors in the rest of the field? Sorry, I forgot I had any. Uh, they were just so far behind us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that's reminded me of two things. One, I need to give everyone some um, some chips, and that's chips, worth a chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. excellent. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, he's an impulsive hot shot. I can't help, <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> Okay, there's Chuck's Playing three chips from the start, and oh, that's a different thing entirely. And there's the bonus. Yay! Yay! 
And I believe Dr. Articap is unlucky, so only gets two chips. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I'm... I'm giving you chips from the wrong pile. <laughs> I was I'm giving sure you my that chips. my opponents will be keen to, to catch up on me in the, the, the further races because obviously, you know, they were at a disadvantage in this one. It was my weak. It was my uh, my strong. Oh no, wait! It was my weakest event that I just won. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're gonna have to buy a second Zeptum, by the way. It's Just to fit names my head. Yeah. In chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too. Um, just names are being tossed off in chat. Cow, yes, so many names. We're gonna need an entire fleet. <laughs> well, it's I quite not like just, the cash Not just cow. the Zeptum, of course. We can use the others for the new planes that we get to go on. Mm. Yes. Okay, breaking even is definitely going to be a plane. That, that sounds like it should be a, a fairly heavy combat plane. Yes. Oh, Ziggy, don't give that plane to, um, to Dale. They, they might get flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. But we're breaking in it, you know. <laughs> so, Fish, if I understand correctly, you're heading to the bar to get ratted. Yeah. F first, I'm going to make sure that Nelly is put away properly because he is very protective of his plane. And then he is going to not get very ratted, but he is going to have a celebratory drink. Okay. He's more interested in everyone telling him how how uh, fantastically he performed than the alcohol, to be honest. But the alcohol is <laughs> an important part. So, is Nelly going to be um, moved into the hangars to be maintained and worked on, or is she going to uh, be flown up to the bad debt? I think into the hangars, because... I've got... It's going to be a pain in the neck otherwise because we're going to have to refuel her and then fly her back up. <laughs> and that's going to take a while. But I may just um, be a little generous with a few dollar bills here and there to make sure that the ground crew are keeping an eye on her. Okay. Just in case something happens while she's out of my sight down here um are you telling you know it's bad bet that you're leaving nelly down there well you, nelly like, has been nelly's been down on the ground since we arrived true because she was down there on display with the mm. other race base planes um it, it's you that took uh i forgot the name of your plane now but they took your plane i think it was in russia it is in russia it is yes. in russia but and yeah, he needs to check your camera. Um, the only time that Nelly hasn't been on display down there with the other planes is when I had to fly out to try and bail you guys out when you were getting into trouble over water for no good reason because it had nothing to do with the air races. I'm just wondering about Masha coming down and just sleeping in Nelly. Interesting. Just this wonderful image of somebody sneaking in all in black with a, a tool bag, getting as far as Nelly, and suddenly this, this, this face appears with a gun. <laughs> Is there something to want? <laughs> That's actually kind of what I've got in mind, because I don't necessarily trust you to not get ratted. <laughs> um, well, this is true. I am impulsive, so if people throw drinks at me, um, Chuck's likely to drink them, unfortunately. And, um, and I might need to actually roll against my um, spirit or something to see whether I can resist getting uh, ratted. Roll against your spirit to see if you can resist the spirit. Resist my, uh, it seems somebody logical. else's spirit, yes. So, Fish, um, Nelly is wheeled into the hangars next to um, the Aardvark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in that case, I also need a piece of paper or... No, actually, paint and a bit of wood would be better so that I can just... Paint up on, uh, uh, that I can hang a sign on the front of um, Nelly, reading with an arrow pointing to the Aardvark, uh, saying, that one, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> and can I have a persuasion roll on the tipping the ground crew to keep an eye? Sweet boy. That's a 12. Okay. That certainly makes, uh, as a 12, that makes two raises. Yeah. So the chances are, they certainly seem very um, keen to do so. Excellent. 
And we're looking at this one, not that one, right? Okay, let me you just fill you in on this. The guy who flies that plane, he's a little bit funny in the noodle, and my camera's gone again, but I'll deal with it after this speech. Uh, he's convinced somebody is trying to sabotage his plane or to kill him or something, so that's just a joke for his uh, benefit to say that, because, you know, they're obviously the same model of plane, so gotcha. the saboteurs are supposed to be sabotaging that one, not this one. But gotcha. actually, you know, keep an eye on him, because... I don't think he likes that he didn't finish the race, and I did. And I am, you know, I'm the leader at the moment, so everybody's got to catch up to me, and you know how it is when you're in front, there's people behind you usually with knives. This is where you, you've been talking to them for a while, and they just turn around and go, Pardon, no hablo inglés. Parlez-vous français? Oh, God. That is the most tortured pronunciation of that place I've ever heard. <laughs> but oddly, I can imagine hey, it being vaguely from the, uh, yeah. the Louisiana area. Just, yep. Can I just say that I was having a sort of difficulty there trying to um, go to French while still maintaining Midas' accent. That's why. <laughs> yes. It was not the easiest thing to, uh, task to set myself. We have my but he does speak attempt. French. So. True. I think he probably speaks it slightly better than that. He certainly speaks it better than I do. Oh, Robinson. So, with really? that having been done, Chuck heads off to the bar to um, presumably enjoy entertaining those who are swooning over his nail-biting and Indeed. wonderful victory. And to retell the tale of just exactly how he got that victory and how touch and go it was to make it across Absolutely. the finish yeah. <laughs> and how harrowing it was to look in the mirror and see Dale crashing behind him uh, a worthy opponent and fellow <laughs> Drutt and Robinson what are you folks up to? Um, I'm going to bring my cats down to ground level because of course I've been up in the bad death all day. Yep. So I am. I was half kidding about Kipping and Nelly. I'm no longer ki uh, kidding. <laughs> you are going to be Kipping and Nelly. I am actually going to be Kipping and Nelly. I have a knife. Uh, Nelly is not going to be the most comfortable place to kit. Um, no, she's she's Russian. <laughs> I mean, there'd be more room to to kip in the in in your plane. Oh yeah. Well, that's a thought. I does not wish to be too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Might just about be room to spread a sleeping bag, sleeping bag on one of the wings. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, in the market's probably a better idea. Park it up near Nelly. Um. Also, Robinson, have you seen? Um, not Macross, Rubbertech, with the micro bubble shielding. That's what I was referring to. Yeah, the pinpoint yes. barrier system. Yeah, pinpoint barrier. Macross, that was it. Ro Robotech. Yeah. Which also does have the massive main guns that they fire at the uh, fleet when they first turn. It does, indeed. So, what is um, Midas, uh, sorry, Berlin up to at the moment? Um. It's not going to be possible to, you know, sneakily steal parts of a broken plane, is it? Oh my god. <laughs> while, while Merlin should be over m maintaining and fixing up um? <laughs> Midas' plane, <laughs> instead, <laughs> salvage. <laughs> that depends on exactly how you intend to go about it. It's possible. I mean, there's a lot of press coverage, so it's not going to be easy. <laughs> Can you at least have the decency to wait until the plane has been scrapped and steal it from the junkyard instead of right here on the apron in front of everybody? <laughs> yeah, not to mention it still belongs to the independent who is yeah. in the hospital. <laughs> it's been just, scrapped. I'm just making sure the engine doesn't explode and oh look, a rare part. Hang on. Oh, it fell in my bag. What a accident. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 
Not that I can fault you because Nob would do the same thing. <laughs> so, obviously, there's a lot of people around this. How are you intending to give a cover to your going in, fumbling around, looking for parts? What, what's, what's the angle that you're taking? I'm just, you know, because you know, there might be leaks and stuff, so I'm just going to replace some bolts. And of course, when I'm replacing bolts, I'm going to need to go into my bag to get new ones. So that it, nobody would find it weird if I took a part I just took off and put it in there while taking another part out. <laughs> okay. Let's have a performance roll from you, please. Oh, God. <laughs> if you don't have performance, there is an, uh, there is a unskilled, I think. D4 minus two. Oh, that's a very nice zero. That's excellent. Your D6 did really well, didn't it? For the <laughs> uh, for the D4 at two to be the higher of the two dice. <laughs> Don't forget, chip, chips are a thing. You can use your chips if you wish. No, it's okay. I was pushing my luck anyway. So, <laughs> so you start fumbling around in the, the wreckage. And uh, one, one of the mechanics... Oi, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Get, get away from that. It's a shame. Oh, well. I can just steal parts from Nelly. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> I I, I, I'm reducing the weight. That's, that's what I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> reducing the weight of a crashed aircraft. <clears throat> You can already pick no, I think he's thinking forward hat. to his excuses when I catch him trying to steal parts from Nelly. Oh, I see, yes. Now that makes more <laughs> sense. I don't have an excuse for this one. Well, I did have an excuse, but I've been caught, so this isn't going to work. Souvenir <laughs> hunter? <laughs> so, Shard. Um, you get to the hospital. They, all, all through the journey, Dale is very resistant to anyone loosening their clothing to give them any sort of breathing air at all. I just... <clears throat> I tell the... the I tell the EMTs to just leave it. He doesn't want his jack taken off. Let him be. He's breathing. He doesn't want it any easier at the moment. He just needs to be kept awake and kept calm. And this is stressing him out. And what, you're some kind of medical professional or something? This is my job we're talking about here. I uh, reach into my pocket and pull out my credentials. Oh, doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Instant change of demeanor. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry, doctor. Are they a patient of yours? They are now. They weren't before they crashed. <laughs> I mean, Dale is an independent. He is not here with a team, and I am basically offering him my doctoring services free of charge, as he didn't have anyone here to support him. So, very good, doctor. Not a further peep is heard out of the, uh, <laughs> the paramedic for the rest of the journey. Does Dale calm down and stop stressing about? Yeah. All right. I am so tempted to to slip him a thimble full of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, actually, she does. It's not a bad idea. She does. It gets now, a wide-eyed look from um, from the paramedic, but yes, he needs he needs to relax. This will help. It's just a little bit. <laughs> I think we're still in an era where brandy is used to deal yes. with shock. So. Yes, and yep. also where drinks like Guinness were prescribed for, to people with thin blood because it had iron in it. Yep. Yep, indeed. Yep. See, I am completely not out of my territory <laughs> for using alcohol as medicine here. <laughs> oh, <drat. laughs> Yes, Dr. Uttercup's first name is in fact Lily. Lily. <laughs> I haven't heard that song in for ages. Yeah, no, likewise. So, anyone else's plans for the rest of the evening? Um, Dr. Uttercup, will you be staying at the hospital to oversee Dale's um, uh, triage? And I, I think I'm probably attributing a lot more advancement in medical tech than actually ha was existent in the 1930s. 
but I'm not sure what the 1930s equivalent of a paramedic would be. <coughs> or indeed what the medical processes are like for an emergency um, you, emergency. I'm not board. 100% certain, but in that area it's entirely possible that an ambulance driver is just that. And that you would have to have actual medical staff around, so there would possibly have been a doctor on call at the air races anyway. Who would probably have been quite happy to just stand back and let Uttercup do it instead, since mm. equally qualified. But I don't know without looking it up. No, it, it, it didn't occur to me to look it up beforehand, and I should have. My apologies for that. Um, so, when they get uh, Dale to the hospital, um, they're taken into the emergency ward. And um, as soon as the doctors there ask for detail from the, uh, the ambulance driver, they immediately point to you. <laughs> Dr. Ruttercup has all the information you'll need. Dr. Ruttercup's a mouthy woman with a medical degree. Talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> 1930s, huh? Fair enough. Doctor? Sorry. What's the status of, the, of your patient? Uh, severe concussion, broken ribs, and they're uncomfortable with having the jacket removed, which is stressing them out. So probably a private space. I'm not sure why, but it should be very few people in the room, I'm guessing. That might be what's stressing them out. Um, their limbs and back seem to be fine. So there's nothing severe in terms of mobility. <clears throat> Um, and I'm just trying to keep them awake at the moment. We need a private space and we need to help work out. I don't know all of the medical stuff in relates, relation to concussions other than keeping them awake for them to be diagnosed and see if there's other things that need to happen because I'm not sure if at this point it has switched back to, because there are some concussions in which there's too much blood on the brain and it's building up and it does need to be drained. Um, so I'm going to assist and help the doctors figure this out and do what is necessary to okay. help. Um, he is trying to talk, but he is talking gibberish. So there could be more than just concussion going on. Okay, cool. So we'll leave you dealing with that for the next um, little while. Talking gibberish, keep saying something about the aardvark. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Masha, you've flown the uh, the maquette down and yep. had that taxied and pulled into the hangars. Um, mm -hmm. They've not put you in the same hangar as the racers. That's you fair. Out of the races. I'm you seem to out. think that actually doing your job was more important than being in the races, <laughs> which I do not Who'd understand. Who would have thunk it? Um, okay, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a blanket, yep. and I accept that Nelly is too small to kick in. Okay. However, the body of Nelly should be small enough to kick under. I'm yes. Desperately trying to resist quoting the Porsche advert from that Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly it's a which little advert. Too small. <laughs> yes. The only the only advert I can remember from that movie is Volvo. Boxy, Boxy but good. But good. <laughs> yeah. No, there were some slightly close to the bone ones for Porsche and Jaguar as well. Yeah, yeah I, I vaguely remember them being sexual and close to the bone, but that's as far as I, I can't remember yeah. the exact lines. To be fair, the Porsche one was you're looking a. Yeah, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I'm literally grabbing a blanket. She's from the Ukraine. Frankly, this is nothing. <laughs> Probably, yeah. She's more comfortable than home. You know, you, it's a warm night, so it's not like there's snow on the ground and she's doing this. Um, and yes, I am cuddled up with my gun and my knife. Now I'm getting sledgehammer. Yes. yes. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. 
No, Robin, it does not rain in America. <laughs> Depends I think which... you'll find that that mainly happens in Spain on the plains. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's on the plains. And, and we've got the plains here, so but fortunately we're not in Spain. It, yeah, in terms great. of precipitation specifically, it does snow in Alaska, but... <laughs> <laughs> Learning a lot today. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm curious as to, the root of the, uh, as to the root of the question, Robinson. Uh, no, it was just she was talking about how it wasn't snowing. So oh, like, would it rain? Well, sheltering underneath Nelly. Yeah, but don't don't forget Nelly Inside is in a hangar. A hangar. So, yeah, even if yes. it rained, it was going to stay dry. Unless there was a hole in the roof. No. <laughs> 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 no wait, hang on. <laughs> Drop went to the same sort of idea. Hole in my roof. It was letting in gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, Molly is just casting something in the chat. Um, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, when night falls, bed down underneath Nelly. Yeah. Having locked up the maquette, you know. Beep, beep. Um, that sort of thing. I don't think we have libibs yet in the, the 1930s. Oh, give Robinson five minutes. Yeah, yeah. good point. <laughs> and um, so you, the only here. problem is, it'll probably be manually operated. You'll have a really long cable that runs from the plane <laughs> to you in the control box. I remember I when radio just, control cars. My were area of that. expertise is mm. radio, though. Look, That's if true. we've established, you know, that you know, radio control stuff exists. <laughs> that so happened in the first season. Yeah. yeah. So literally, all we need is a radio controlled lock. And a, a little radio handheld communicator. I mean, yeah, admittedly it would be a lump, Lock. but little, little radio control unit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, there would be some kind of radio remote control unit that could be used from a great distance away. I mean, obviously, yeah, it might be a huge, great cabinet of things where you have to repeatedly throw levers and switches. <laughs> but um, when when he puts a full remote control rig in your plane, it's going to take a little bit more of a control system than your, your Nokia phone like Bomb had. <laughs> <laughs> You'll actually need a branch of the GPO to control it. <laughs> Beijing Tommy Flowers, Beijing Tommy Flowers. So you, try, you head in yep. there with your blanket and your yeah, plushy gun got and down. your whatever else. Uh, I'm just and checking. I have got a dagger. I'm fairly sure I have. I'm pretty sure that you picked one up from one of the oh, NPCs. Oh, the Bowie you... knife. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And you, you start to walk underneath um, Nelly mm. when someone in a uh, mechanics overall starts <laughs> walking in your direction with a big yeah. ass wrench in their hand. <laughs> Okay, well, Masha wears a black flight suit. We have established this. We have. Um, and she is pulling up her flight hood. And I'm basically sneaking around the other side of the plane oh, you're to try and come upon him unawares. Don't kill my ground crew. Ro roll it. I'm not going to kill Roll the stealth, cat. please. Self, want to actually make a bowl. Yes. God. Um. Good news, I've had the skill. Better news, it adds a d6, so thank God. Um. Okay, so that's a five. Thank you, d6. We like you. <laughs> Yeah, so a five. Okay. What are you giving me a look for, fish? <laughs> I'm wondering when you're going to figure this out. Yeah. yeah. So you, you carry on. You start approaching this guy from behind. Mm. He turns round, looks straight at you, and says, "You're not supposed to be here, miss. Please leave." This is a uh, plane belonging to one of my crew. This is plain belonging to Mr. Charles Shackleford. He's paid me to look after it. Please leave. 
How's he now? Yes, Great. please leave. Money you get from uh, Charles Shackleford comes from me. I can't see any proof of that, ma'am. <laughs> Can I make an intimidation check, please? Go right? for it. <laughs> I can't believe you are disrupting the guard <laughs> to, uh, patrol that I have spent both money and a persuasion role putting into play. <laughs> you realise while you're arguing with this, some bright spark is taking all of the uh, <laughs> necessary uh, tubing out of the engine on the other side of the plane. <laughs> I'm going to take off tomorrow and all the fuel will just be squirted straight out the side of the plane. <laughs> it does reduce the weight. Fuel is heavy, you know. I thought getting rid of it would help me go faster. <laughs> well, the six explodes, then it does. A total of nine. <clears throat> Damn it! Okay. So, you claim that uh, you are well playing along to Chuck Sheffield. Who has paid you money? That's excellent. right, ma'am. Good. Carry on. You're doing excellent job. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm perfectly happy that you've done this. <clears throat> I don't necessarily trust Chat to have hired someone competent. <laughs> and look, I didn't even stab the ground crew or anything. Didn't stab, didn't shoot. Might have scared. I wasn't going to shoot. There's too many planes around, and they're full of, you know, flammable stuff. Not to mention there are saboteurs around, apparently, according to one of the uh, pilots. So it's not a bad idea to keep an eye out for them. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic, Fish. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Possibly sliding out horizontally. Yeah, but that wouldn't look as good. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it would be a far better design. But yeah. you know, if, if you really wanted to glide better in, in Nelly, you just need to have something installed in the back that pops out like uh, Mario Kart, and just have uh, a, an extra set of gliding wings. Okay, so give up on the, the wings altogether and just parasend. <laughs> oh yeah, spontaneous biplane yeah. transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes. out the back. Oh, a fan arrangement that stretches from the wings all the way through to the tail, thus basically turning it into a fish shape. Even better, <laughs> even better, along with that and having the, the balloon slash parachute thing going on, you have a setup where you can actually sit there and pedal to have propulsion <laughs> going forward still. This has gone so very, I'm, very I'm wacky all races all of a sudden. Pedal really hard now, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ring your bell and pedal like hell. So, um, in in the bar, Chuck. People are buying the people are offering to buy the winner drinks left, right, and centre. Um, you walk in, the barman. First thing he does, drinks on the house for the race winner. Oh God! You know. I'm starting to really like this place. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I'll have a drink <laughs> and, and and talk to people about how wonderful I am. <laughs> and people are more than willing to listen. Can I have a performance roll, please? Performance roll. That's what I thought you were going to say. Not great. Only four, which is a basic <laughs> success. So. He's not made a fool of himself, and that's about as far as it goes. Clearly the adrenaline from the, the very taut finish, and the shock yeah. of seeing what happened to Dale's aircraft. That's what it is. Still still coming down from the shock of, you know, that, that could be me moment. Um, but nevertheless, people are lapping up the stories, both of this one and any other ones you care to tell, of your adventures and daring do. And almost everyone that wants to listen to you wants to buy you a drink. That's really very nice of you, but uh, the drinks are on the house. Uh... Can you bank drinks? <laughs> and it, uh, sure enough, as as soon as 
Chuck puts down an empty glass. He'll turn to say something to someone. He'll turn back, and the glass is <laughs> miraculously full, full again. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I can't decide whether everyone just really is is keen to hang out with the uh, um, the winner of today's race, or whether everyone wants to make sure he doesn't win the next one. <laughs> Little bit of both. Yeah, this mouthy son of a bitch doesn't deserve to win. <laughs> Give him a hangover for the next race. Yep. Surely, if you have a hangover for the next race, you'll want to win because you'll want to fly three Maybe times. You can as get fast. to the end really quick so that I can yeah. Just, yeah, so go and have a lie down. Don't, don't forget that the, the, tomorrow is a maintenance day. There are no races tomorrow. Yeah, this is true. I don't have to race tomorrow. You haven't got a race I've tomorrow. A, I've got a day of lying in a darkened room before I have to race again. <laughs> So, so yeah, uh, I think Midas, Midas will be happy to um, <laughs> regale people with whatever they want to uh, to hear. Uh, will try and pace himself and just, since they're replacing the drinks the moment they're finished, he's not going to drink them too quickly. But he is nevertheless almost certainly going to get drunk. And given an opportunity, he would rather not go home alone. But that's just life. Well, what? what okay, we'll, we'll come back to that one, Fish. Um, well, he's, he is an attractive 18 year old. Yes. He's just won an hour late. He wants to celebrate. Yes, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> there will be celebrations available. <laughs> Merlin, uh, yeah, Merlin. Getting confused with all the M's. Stop having to Is there a bit of bear? What? There. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so ha having failed in your initial attempt at looking through the wreckage for any kind of cool tech, do you have any plans for the afternoon evening? Uh, there isn't. I can't think of anything that could really be done. Kind okay. of just one of those slow days, I guess. Cool. You could tune up and prepare uh, the the plane that is going to be flying tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, but then I'd do that on the maintenance day, which is the purpose of the maintenance day. You or you could get started radical. early. If I'm allowed anywhere near the plane. <laughs> you, you, you could be radical and you could try, you know, just having a quiet evening and then sleeping. <laughs> which I gather some people do. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Yeah, insane thing called reading a book. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um... I uh, don't just approve of these book newspapers. things. Newspapers. Like they're corrupting the youth. I any new inventions. Any new inventions. Okay, so you, you're kind of in, um... the uh, It's kind of a back-end area. Yeah, but there's lots of people here, so there's going to there be There are lots of people. Um, <laughs> there, there's talk of, um... Howard Hughes putting together a brand new aircraft. Supposedly the biggest ever. Oh, they're going big. <laughs> um, I have to make the smallest plane ever, though. There's, there's, there's talk of um, new advancements in engines that um, the Hollywood Knights have got access to. So not, not Hollywood Knights, Blake Aviation have got access to. Blake Aviation being the security office that heads uh, runs out of Boeing Field. So it's over the other side of the country from where you are, but they've cl clearly got some new engine tech that might give them the edge over um, the pirates. But no one's saying exactly what that new tech is. So basically the most interesting thing is the vertical takeoff planes. That's, yes, the, the British have the most interesting thing in the immediate vicinity. Yeah. In that case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to my room and I'm going to see how I can do it better. <laughs> oh boy. So, going back round to Dr. Attercup then. Um, Dale accepts um, your recommendations and with you and the other doctor attending is happy for you to do what you and they feel needed to assist their recovery. Um, over the next hour or so, their speech becomes coherent and they're able to then explain a number of things to you, um, including um, your findings and what happened with the aircraft they've got very clear recollection of um, losing control 
They've got a black spot where it was cartwheeling. And the next yeah. thing they recall is you picking them up and um, help, not picking them up, but attending to them on the ground by the wreck. They don't remember okay. climbing out of the aircraft. In terms of losing control, um, was it just that they couldn't control it, or was there a mechanical malfunction that might need to be looked into? It was a crosswind. Crosswind, um, okay. The, the aircraft wasn't under power, came through the gap between two buildings, and there was a crosswind going straight through that gap. Yep. They didn't anticipate it, and uh, it took the aircraft off, off of uh, the angle of attack. They didn't have crewmates spending chips for them, and therefore... No. <laughs> exactly. This is why you need a team. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're gonna have to let him put rocket boosters on, aren't we, at some point? So, uh, Dale, is there anyone here that is with you, or are you here alone? I'm here alone. Um, I don't think there's much that can be salvaged about your plane, and I don't know if you have another one. But we can have our crew gather up your salvage and see if something can be done about it. That's very nice of you. Um, I do have other planes. If you can get me to a phone, I can have one flown down here. All right. If you <laughs> well, you've got still, a day to it's rest. It's still race day, right? It's still race day today. So uh, I've got maintenance day tomorrow to get yeah. the plane here. Okay. Before you get into the plane on the next race day, I want to make sure that your concussion is doing much better and that you are functional. It's going to be hard flying a plane with broken ribs, let alone everything else. Understood. Um, at the moment, your concussion isn't doing very well at all. You're you're lucid. You you seem perfectly fine. We <laughs> yep. need your concussion to be doing much better and disabling you in a far greater, a far greater mm -hmm. <laughs> Fun thing about concussions, though, is you can be fairly lucid and not notice or realize it too. Yeah. And they can sneak up on you at the worst possible times. Like I don't know, flying a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you happen um, to be closely racing with someone and have one of those moments that could be bad for multiple people oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm gonna ask because hospitals like this they should be able to wheel a phone into the room shouldn't they um, or um, possibly not in the 1930s but they can put dad in a wheelchair and then wheel dad to a that's... phone Mm. Yeah, a, a bigger yeah. hospital okay. might have one they could wheel into the onto the ward, but not necessarily in a, a little backwater yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah, mm. backwater. That's the word. Uh, it is a backwater. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get them set up and put into a wheelchair and take them to the phone. Cool. Okay, Dale makes uh, makes two phone calls. Um, one to arrange for a, a plane to be prepped, and one for a pilot to go to get the aircraft and then fly it down here. Okay. Um, can I have a... It's a spot roll, I think, in this system. Notice. There we go. Notice. Uh, so many systems have the same thing under different names. It gets confusing. Boing. Whoa. Okay. 13. Oh. Apparently, Fantasy Grounds really like Shard today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how. Uh, that's because uh, Mithra is in her environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Me medical emergency in a hospital. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> environment makes a difference. So, um, although Dale doesn't give any indication of where they're phoning, the phone is sufficiently loud that um, you can make out accents and even some of the background noise. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like whoever, is, whoever Dale was talking to um, had a Bostonian accent. So the plane is coming from somewhere, but if the accent's correct, somewhere up north. Okay. I'm starting to think that Dale might be like an independent, independently wealthy, like... Yeah. 
with the reluctance to let anyone loosen their clothing, I'm at the moment going assuming, on there, Whitdale. I'm assuming that Dale is an independently wealthy northern uh, lady. Yeah, that's my assumption. Mm. But it could be something different. Knight could have pulled a fast one on the <laughs> Dale is actually I three cannot pilots in any London. information because <laughs> patients... Dale is three goblins in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> Three goblins in a flight suit. Or, or possibly four, don't <coughs> ask moderately. Yeah. I suppose actually you know, one in each leg, <laughs> supporting one in the middle, and then one down each arm. If you see them if you see them in cockpit, they're spread around the cockpit. There's one operating the pedals with their hands. Yes. There's, there's another one holding onto the joystick. <laughs> and there's one yeah. on the throttle. <laughs> yes. I like that. That's what feels to me. Oh, Canaan, that was a good game. Mm. I now twice. So, hmm. um, from there, the evening rolls through relatively um, quietly for all parties. Heading into the first maintenance day of the race series. Um, overnight crews have been removing most of the debris from um, Dale's wreck. And um, but there's still the occasional bit that you can see that un under the glorious sunlight, there's bits that in the darkness they couldn't see to pick up. Um, and you can see the marks where bits of the plane have impacted the buildings. Um, the, the plane definitely left its mark on the on the uh, on the airfield. Um, all the pilots are going through basic pre um, pre-flight checks with their their aircraft, making sure nothing's happened to them overnight. Um, Peppered you, seeing that he you are right next to him is going over his aircraft with a fine tooth comb. He is checking everything. He's got the only hairy aircraft here. He has to comb it every morning. <laughs> it actually is like um, shark skin. It adds to the aerodynamics of the... Ah, of course. But only when well brushed and conditioned. Drill cream adds to the speed. <laughs> Extra slip. I mean, if we wanted to go biotech, and, and have a, a constantly excreting fluid out of the skin of the airplane. It'll fly through the air like fish swim through the water. Yeah, yeah, we're nope, getting we into a having... very different environment to the standard we're... crimson skies now. Yes, we are not different. using the word excreting fluids. <laughs> oh. uh, nope. Yeah, <laughs> nope. Aircraft do not need a moist exterior, no. <laughs> oh, God, you made it worse. Thank you, Knight. You're oh, welcome. Make the bad man stop. <laughs> so in terms of um, maintenance around Nelly, is there anything that you specifically want done in terms of tuning and modification? And Robinson, is there anything that Merlin specifically wants to try and do? <laughs> No, out of fear of getting told off. Yeah. <laughs> Midas just wants Nelly running like Nelly is supposed to run. She's a good plane. She's already one of the fastest um, likely to be here. And she's got the best pilot. So really, just so long as Nelly is in tip-top condition, there's no no specific tweaks or alterations that, uh, that I want. What is the next event? The next event is a, a stunt race. They've called it the barnstorming oh special, but put no more details around it. Yeah. So in that case, yeah, that's he's that he's in his element. That's the race he should do best at. So he just wants Nelly running a tip-top shape, and that's as much as he needs. Doesn't need anything special out of it. Okay, cool. Although I lack one of the advantages that I had before we changed the system, because in the old system he had. Um, I don't remember what it, what it was called. He had a, an edge that actually gave him a bonus on uh, low-level flying, barnstorming. Hey, fish. But that didn't carry over to... Uh, uh, fish, you need to redo your camera. Yeah, 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 okay. I was about to wave at it, and then I realised that was probably a bad idea. Maybe I should just hold up a camera image. <laughs> there we go, that should fix it. 
do not know why it's God, doing I'm such this, a, I, I owe everyone, okay. especially fish, a huge apology. Oh, okay. Because up until now, we've had the, um, the hand-drawn image of Chuck on screen rather than fish. Because I forgot to re-enable fish cam. <laughs> so it hasn't made the slightest bit of difference whether I was there. <laughs> right, okay. Nobody said a word. No, not a peep out of anybody. Nobody noticed, Tanner. Oh God. My apologies so, to hello, fish people, and all I am here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. See my living room. Oh God. Do you think we could cut Nelly's wings off and replace them with fiberglass? No. <laughs> when was fiberglass invented? We have it. Yeah, on the, the, game, the, so. Is it the Hacker Cargo? Something yeah, like that? He's made of fiberglass. We've already fiberglass. got a fiberglass plane. You've got a fiberglass, yeah. The you hull cannot, of the Hacker Gaze fiberglass. Cut the Hacker Gaze wings it, off. It is no good to us at this point, but if you want to build a completely new fuselage. Just take the metal skeleton and just replace all of the um, the actual the, the skin panels shell the skin yeah. panels with fiberglass for later races. Then you go ahead. Just so long as we have it, so that they can be swapped back to the metal ones, uh, metal and wood ones, <laughs> when I want when people are shooting at me. In fact, if we can get them replaced with aluminium when people are shooting at me, that would be even better. <laughs> Hey, aluminium right, and rocks. Everything. Aluminium is a very good metal. Yeah. In terms of hardness for um, weight, it's about the best you can get. Which is why they make aircraft out of it. Which is why so much is made out of aluminium. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's much, much lighter for the same um, yeah. you know, sturdiness. With the downside that it is flammable. Yes. So it's not recommended. Unless people are firing... Um, incendiary rounds at me. I don't think that's going to be a huge problem. Yeah, you can't really say that it's exactly an edge case, can you? No, no, Chrono, we don't want hot swappable wings. We've already established they're inflammable. So cold swappable <laughs> wings would be better. Hot swappable midair. But when it comes down to flammable, flammable materials on things that might catch fire, people have magnesium alloys on their cars. Mm, yeah. I know. That's because they're fools. Anyhow, the on the other hand, Hot Wheels. I have mm. the mental image of, you know, like the uh, Gundam like jetpack things that they attached for the optional uh, weaponry and so forth. I now have oh, the yeah. mental image of the wings just detaching and then just another pair of wings gliding in on their own. <laughs> Me Megaton Vita has rules for those kind of things, by the way. Yes! I don't remember what they call them, possibly command armor. Be so, um, if there's really no... tempted by a Mechton game with Mecha underneath air to hop yes! over the helium <laughs> by now, I mean, had that come up earlier on. <laughs> so tempted to write that game. Okay, Molière wins, however. Please do not US use USB wings, you'll never put them in right side up. No, on this first is true. Oh, no, because if they're the new USB, they go either way. Oh, <laughs> uh, USB C, it's yeah. True. But yeah, Molly's right, or on the second try either for that matter, yes. Of course, the problem with that is it's always, they... it's always the third try. Yeah, because they plug in either way with USB-C, you'd probably end up with one wing the opposite way up to the other wing, and, and the whole plane would be all over the place, because you've got lift on one side, and, and on the other side it's pulling down. Yeah. Do a barrel roll, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're implying that um, Excel spreadsheets are flying my plane. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Oh, so, Shard, um... Dale seems to make fairly good um, recovery progress through the day. Obviously, with ribs, there's not a lot that can be done. Putting them in a cast isn't going to actually do a whole lot. Right. You could barbecue them. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure Dale would love you barbecuing their ribs. No, I am not, Drud. <laughs> well, you are Dr. Atacap. Oh, you know what? I must consider this now. Uh oh. <laughs> is is Doctor Atacup a secret cannibal? <laughs> it's supposed to be a secret. Cheat. Oh, <laughs> I am you know, very good. So many at medical it. interns on this uh, uh, base. I don't understand it. <laughs> but yeah, you um... know when I'm doing surgery, I mean, 
They're not going to miss this organ or that piece of meat. It'll be yeah, fine. It's like, it's like building something mechanical. You put it all together and there's all these bits left over. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shard, um, I'm assuming you'll have stayed overnight at the hospital. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to... I mean, hospitals tend to have rooms for physicians and whatnot that are staying overnight. Um, I have the nursing staff, if they'll need something, to come get me immediately in terms of care. But otherwise, leaving Dale to recover, and at this point, I think it's probably okay for them to sleep. Um, but they will need to be watched or checked on throughout the night while they're sleeping, simply because... Have to monitor that for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it'll be the same set of nurses the entire time, and they will also know about the situation. Cool. Um, so no, no calls calls through the night for your attention. Um, come morning and through the day, Dale seems to be um, very cognizant of everything that's going on around them um, the eye response is if you flash a light in their eyes are normal okay uh, no, um, sign of, no sign of any injuries that weren't detected previously um, so aside from the broken ribs all seems good with Dale alright um uh you obviously know I'm part of the uh, bad debt, so if you need anything, just send a message to us, or I'm probably gonna be on the ground here waiting for the race tomorrow as well. Um, try to take it easy today. Don't do anything too vigorous, but I know that you need to get prepared for flying tomorrow it's not as well. like I can fly anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll let them, let them go and get dressed again and take off to take care of their stuff. Okay, cool. So the, the maintenance day is um, a wash with mechanics and air crews pouring over the aircraft. Um, not every aircraft on the race had not only um, failed to complete the race, but um, a, a lot of them didn't make it to the ground in one piece either. Um, <laughs> it, it was it was quite a... Um, uh, almost a demolition derby in that respect um, of the 20 aircraft that started the race only 9 or 10 are being worked on with a view to racing tomorrow <laughs> the rest you know, are still in the field in multiple bits out there somewhere when you're flying a plane you should never go empty <laughs> Especially when everyone else is going farther and faster than you, just, just give up at that point. Save your plane. <laughs> Stupid hot shots. Ugh. Our casualties are usually this bad for a race. We're still in an era where people drop dead on dance floors after marathons. Yeah. And, I mean... This is an era where a lot of the planes weren't exactly... Quality in terms of craftsmanship of planes is still a thing. Yeah, um, there's there's a lot of people that think they are barnstormers and top notch pilots when really they should just They're stay on the pilot. ground. There are a lot of aircraft that are held together with tape and prayer. They this shouldn't is, be getting off the ground. This is an era in Crimson Skies universe. This is an era where you've got the equivalent of the, the modern street racers who think they are on a par with professional drivers, mm -hmm. but yep. actually just like to spend a bit of time wrapping themselves and their neighbours around lampposts. Yes. Yeah. And also, flying too high because you don't have oxygen. In, you're not breathing oxygen when you're flying up high either in these planes. The air is thinner and... Yeah, in, in terms of the air races, they're not flying at that level of altitude. Right, but, right. Um, there are people that would be just because they can. 
and yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes. Pure yeah. physics just let you down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at I put the picture of, of Nelly. The wings mm. on Nelly are barely existent. Yeah. Yeah. They're just designed for bare minimum amount of lift needed and reducing drag. Yeah, it's a missile you can steer. Going yeah. slow is not a thing. I'd so... like to think that air to air missiles were based on planes like Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So the, the, the plane the, um... that we're using as the oh. model for Nelly is a, a GB, which is was a racing plane. A racing plane, yeah. Um, and it's this stubborn little thing with a very, very cramped cockpit stuck right near the tail section. And as you can see, there's very little of a tail section. The yeah. the, the upright is next to nothing. The wings. How do you steer? It's got. It, does it, it just is... flaps, or do you just literally fling yourself from side to side? Designed you turn it and pull. For going in a straight line. Oh. No, what you do is you open up the cockpit and stick your hand out <laughs> and grab the air. <laughs> Just float, just grab hold of the nearest telegraph pole. Mm -hmm. now, what, Play the air brake. What they would tend to do is roll the plane over and then pull the stick back. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't so much you turn can... it as roll over and go up. Yeah, you can so, steer yeah, up and down. So if you want to go sideways, you just turn side on and go up yeah. or down. That's how all of my planes work in those games where you have to build your own planes. <laughs> Are you sure they don't all go down? No, 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 they usually fly. I'm, I'm pretty good at getting them to go up. It's the doing stuff while up is the hardest part of designing <laughs> planes, apparently. But anything can fly if you give it enough thrust. So as... How did you nearly ban yourself, Drott? How? I misclicked, I'm chatty. Okay. Fair enough. Um, as things are coming to a close towards the end of the working day, um, an announcement goes across the tannoy. Attention all racers. Attention all racers. We apologize for this sudden change in schedule, but due to some issues we've had in arranging the Barnstormer race, tomorrow will be two sprint races instead. The Barnstormer race will take place later. Thank you. Yeah, happy with that. But... No. There's cussing from pretty much every corner. From everybody who has tweaked their, their planes for the barnstorming. Mm. Yeah. All I really need to worry about for the sprint race is just finding out how much fuel I'm going to need for it so that I don't overfuel and thus keep the wham. Yeah, and they're the two separate races, so it's... Forces, yeah, it's knowing what the yeah. forces are. You should do some uh, math. <laughs> yeah, Merlin and I can do that as mathematics tomorrow. Sorry, I, I didn't do the voice there. Merlin and I can do the maths on that. The math on that tomorrow. That's fine. Yeah, so you have to use the uh, dreadful term math. Yeah, I got it. This is the thing, if I'm in character, I gotta say math. So every time I do, you know, my dad gives me this look like, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently there, your dad comes from somewhere around Hobart. Yes. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I have never claimed this was a good answer. <laughs> no. It was uh, Mountains of Madness that I was going to play uh, an Aussie bush pilot. So, well, I hope uh, you still want to. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was years ago. If you get round to running Mountains of Madness at some point, I may keep the same character idea, yeah. Yep. So, does yeah, anyone, no. anyone have any plans for the evening? Uh, no, I've got a race tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So no going and getting uh, drunk tonight then. Not tonight. Is there actually anything in terms of celebration or whatnot, pre-race stuff going on? Because I'll hang out with the uh, pilots and whatnot and have some drinks. Um, no celebrations. Most most of the pilots are getting an early night because they've got races tomorrow. Oh jeez. Um, the, the ground crews. <laughs> some of them are celebrating that they've done their bit. The plane's going to fly. They've just got to give it a once over tomorrow and it'll be good. So some of the ground crew are getting tanked. Yeah, they're the people you really want to have. Back you know there. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a catalog or magazine or newspaper that has various ads of new or older airplanes to peruse through, because I have an idea of 
what kind of a plan I want that I want to name EMT for <laughs> rescuing people. Tonight, so, so... given that this is the night before the race, yep. tonight, I think Midas is going to sleep in Nelly because he is not convinced that... It's not fussed about anyone else. He just has this feeling that Pepper is going to try something. <laughs> Like swapping the planes over or something, just sneaking in and rolling them around so that I'm flying the wrong one. Paint it a whole bunch of different colours. Yeah. God, the amount of work to repaint two pa pa two planes overnight. <laughs> if you have enough people, yeah, like a crew of ten could do it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And then it would one be a conspiracy. Man X hours, then it takes. <laughs> well, there's, there's a. At some point, it starts getting more inefficient the more people you have. There's a balance of. There is, there is, yeah. yeah. There's a sweet spot though, which is the, the perfect mm -hmm. amount of time. <laughs> Five people is perfect. Six is terrible. <laughs> That's well. <laughs> so, drop. Where is um? Madonna going to be sleeping? Um, Madonna is actually going to return to the bad debt okay. once she knows that Chuck is taking responsibility and looking after his baby. <laughs> if nothing else, if she thinks that Chuck is taking responsibility, she probably needs to lie down. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, this is it. That's true. So, first thing in the morning, um, the, the race office has the maps out for both races. Excellent. Each race is a 200 mile an hour sprint. Sorry, 200, 200 mile 200 sprint. Miles, but... Yeah, I was going to say. Mile an hour. So, this is where everyone's now calculating. Right, I've got this much tank range. I can do this, 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 yeah. and this. So only fill my tank with this much fuel, please. If I remember rightly, I need like two thirds of a tank for this, if I'm remembering the plane correctly. But this is something Apparently that... Apparently your top speed is 285. Okay. So I can pull each of these in in under an hour. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, what do we knowledge navigation again to, to work out for? Yep. Mm. Yeah, sounds right. When I, and I will get Merlin to help me with the math to make sure, because <laughs> he's better at that kind of stuff than I am. But my knowledge navigation comes in at five. Um, Merlin can use science because he can use, do all the, the weights oh. and Yay. fluid dynamics. And... Uh, um, yeah, what I'm doing, that's oddly enough, because nice. when you mentioned that, what I'm doing on the bad debt is I want to get as good a weather advanced weather report as I can uh, to filter down to Merlin and Chuck. Yeah, this is what I did on the endurance race. Before. Yeah, I was looking at the weather reports and yeah. calculating yeah. best possible route yeah. for fuel efficiency I'm, and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, I'm figuring. And then I blew it by opening up the throttle at the end to come in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm figuring that. Uh, We've got access to a more powerful radio rig, so we can get in touch with one of the major weather stations instead of relying on, you know, some poor bod stuck up a mountain in a hut. <laughs> Is it going to rain? Maybe. Ah. Uh, it's like that stone on the outside of the building. Stone yes. missing. Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, do you have any sort of geography kind of skill to make head or tail of the weather reports raw coming in off the... Or me? Yes. Uh, I have knowledge navigation, if that helps. Yeah, that, that will help. Um, otherwise, we have yep, common no knowledge. knowledge. Knowledge navigation will be sufficient. Okay. 26 is... Uh, we don't talk about that one, but that one is six. <laughs> we don't talk about uh, that one. Ten. Okay, cool. So you you the can feed. Let itself down. So you got you got to raise fish. What was your result? 
Uh, what was my result? My result was a five. Didn't get a raise on that. But that was without any bonus from um, any of Merlin's science. Uh, yeah, well, um, right, Merlin, what was your result? Because you got a plus one now from Drutz. Uh, I rolled a four. So you got plus two, taking it to seven, so you don't get a raise. Seven. Not quite enough. Not quite enough for a raise. Enough, for a raise. Uh, I have a lot of chips if we want the raise. Honestly, I'm really hoping someone else gets a really high number on a, uh, a D4, because... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think that's the record for the highest I've seen on a D4. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. Um, more than four times the maximum value of a D4 is quite a good result. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, the, the pilots all head off to make their plans and start to get their aircraft ready. Yeah. This race is to be done from a standing start on the hard. So a horn will sound, every pilot races to the plane, and it's sheer bedlam to get to the air. Ooh, so athletics as well as piloting. <laughs> it's a, yep, athletics and scramble. All starting from the pilot hub. Uh, is gonna be in the uh, gyro again. Waiting near the middle and end of the race. You know, just for a change, I kind of wish I was a bit taller. Oh. <laughs> Longer legs. Yeah, I mean, look at that guy over there. His legs are nearly... Just his legs are as tall as I am. <laughs> How tall did you decide Chuck was? I haven't actually got a height uh, down for Chuck. Um, at least I haven't in here. I don't know whether I have on the original file. I but I see him as kind of like low average. Oh, bless him. He's about 5'8". They're still taller than me. Around there. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, that makes him a good fast jet pilot. So, you know, once yeah. fast jets get invented, he'll be fine. It's part of why I saw him as that, because yeah. he's a pilot. <laughs> yes. So. It's not just fast jets. It time comes for the to... race start. Yeah. All the pilots line up. And, Fish, you will notice, A, that there is a... Bloodhawk in the hangars that wasn't in the hangars when you went to bed wasn't last there night. Before. And Dale has lined up with the other pilots. Can you look this up? Hey Dale, good to see you still in the race. Got to, someone's got to give you a challenge. That's what I said to the guys yesterday. <laughs> no, I, know, I saw the papers. You're all over them. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. For some reason, they seem more interested in the people that actually landed. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um Just just a question. Yes. Were they flying a bloodhawk before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They've got like six packs, it's fine. <laughs> they come in six packs, so I five assume, six at a time. I would assume that the rules of the event require you to use not if not necessarily the same exact plane, the same model of plane. I'm, actually, is it one. the same? Because otherwise, you could seriously mess with this if you've got the money. <laughs> yeah. Is it the I mean, exact just, same paint particularly job? Particularly the endurance no. uh, race. If you swap okay. out on the endurance race for just a plane with a really good um, MPG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that could be interesting. Uh, yeah. For someone that's got the money to have different planes for each race, yeah, because yeah. you, yeah. you could get three planes, one suited for each of the races, and it would give you a huge advantage over people just flying the same plane. <laughs> but I mean, presumably, to because be this fair, is just the replacement of the the same hmm. model plane, it's it's presumably acceptable. The the Bloodhawk is well designed for gliding. Well, so they, they should have apparently it's based on uh, previous experience. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't account for crosswinds when you're flying between buildings. <laughs> but you have to. You have A to. Sample size of one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, there there is a difference in the paint job. It's the same color scheme, um, but and the same basic paint job, but aside from um, slightly different n marking numbers and such. Um, this one has kill markings on the side. Okay. And as you're lined up at the start waiting for the uh, finish line, you can see one of the mechanics walking past with um, the morning paper. And there's a picture of you talking to presumably the 
um, the press, stood right in front of the burning wreckage of your opponent's plane. <laughs> You're there, grinning like oh, a loon, positioning, saying, <laughs> saying how how fortunate you were to have won and how much much of a good race it was. And there's the wreckage of Dale's plane behind you. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't do that when I'm racing. <laughs> so all the all the pilots are lined up. Okay. No, you got to look that way. And the horn the goes off. Way. Fish, can I have an athletics roll, please, if you can put the cap down an for just a second. Athletics roll. Uh, <sighs> Chuck trips over a cap. I <laughs> don't want to particularly waste any chips on this, so I think I'm just going to have to accept that I'm getting to my plane rather late. <laughs> I've got a better chance of making it, making things up on piloting rolls than I have on athletics rolls, so I don't want to waste a chip on athletics rolls. Well, whilst you're not the first to get to their plane, um, you're far from the last. And <laughs> you'll be pleased to know that um, Abelard is clearly out of shape. <laughs> because he is huffing and puffing by the time but you get to but he's still got a good way to go and he's already huffing and puffing dear oh dear oh dear so can uh, I have I, a piloting roll I would have had a four if it wasn't for the time taken when he reached the plane to pause and yell back chop chop type of pepper <laughs> <laughs> The clapping just gave me a heart attack because, of course, I heard it from the door. <laughs> Can I also have a piloting roll because you're starting the, the plane whilst it's a normal procedure and I wouldn't normally ask for a roll. This yeah, is a high pressure I'm, situation. Is, indeed it is. That's an eight, however. I might add a quick start, raise by my I... reckoning. If you'd have thought about that yesterday, you could have. Yeah. <laughs> See that? I can imagine you being there making this right. Quick start button. Fold out <laughs> wings for gliding. <laughs> Just adding all these things you can add to the planes. We'll call it the option works. <laughs> External pony engine for quick starts. <laughs> so, Fish, um, whilst the other pilots got to their planes, some of them got there before you. Some of them are having trouble getting their engines going. Um, one of the planes just doesn't want to start at all. Yours is the first plane out of the hangars. Okay. A glance in your um, your review mirror shows that the second plane out of the hangars is a Storm Raven. A oh, what? I... Is the Storm Raven coming out of the same hangar as me, or a different hangar? Uh, different hangar. But st still a racing hangar. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether it's possible to alter my taxi route slightly to try and slow them down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, I looked up Storm Raven, <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, because it's where I'm at 40k. <laughs> yeah, no, if it's one of those, I'm not getting in its way. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody's cheating. They're using bolt guns. <laughs> it's the plasma pistols you got to look out for. Yeah. They just true. melt your plane away. I would say the bolt guns are more likely to jam than they are to destroy your plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm already in front. Yes. So it's not a, a matter of trying to, you know, actively foil them just so they can't open the throttle too early and uh, i'd rather be in front of them if possible okay. during takeoff yeah give, give us a piloting role to position yourself such that it impairs their their taxi that's a nine <laughs> that'll do nicely this is how you used to start racing games by doing this yeah that's into the in side any given you back in the days in Jaguar XJ220 when we were, when I was using the Carlsberg and I just had rather than a um, a standard controller I had one built of light switches so it was an on off switch rather than um, just a turn and I would start with forward and either left or right clicked on so that the moment the game started I would 
bots flew into the car next to me. <laughs> Not yeah. a bad tactic. <laughs> when racing against AI, yes. But sometimes they were players as well. Sometimes they were players, yeah. Mm. So you get you take to the air. Um, due to having had to manoeuvre and slow down to avoid you, the Storm Raven is now in third place as you take to the air. Oh, bless. The name of the game. With Dale in second and Pepperdew in fourth. I'm worried about Pepperdew, I know Pepperdew's got a fast plane. Yep. Because it's the same plane as yours. <laughs> so, oh, it's right. yours, yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is a short race. So, based on um, the information that you had from um, the navigation rolls you made, the yeah. aerodynamics and fluid dynamics from Merlin, and the weather reports from Madonna. You had uh, just one success total because you didn't get any extra raises on your roll. No. Yeah, that's the basic. Success. So, can I have a piloting roll at plus one? Uh, so, with the plus one, that would be ten. Okay, that's a raise. Still only one raise, unfortunately, but uh, I'll accept it. So, all, all planes once in the air going full out. It's a straight point to point race. Yeah. All the planes are going helpful there. You, you look in the mirror and you can see a couple of planes manoeuvring around each other, um, trying to slipstream and get an yeah. advantage that way. And there's a the lot of being going at on the front you. is I don't get to do to use slipstream maneuvers. The advantage of being at the front is I'm in the front. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, through the race you see. That the Storm Raven manages to pass Dale, as does Pepperji. Oh, poor Dale. <sighs> Can't believe you let that little snot get past you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, halfway through the race. You're still out front. No, no one seems to be catching you. They all seem to be getting caught up in um, the, being blocked from passing them by the Storm Raven. The, they're flying yeah, very yeah, defensively, yeah. getting in the everyone's way. Storm Raven is flying the way I took off, the way I take. Basically, it, basically, yes. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That's fine by me. Keeps them off my back. The next thing you hear is an explosion behind you. Oh, oh shit. shit. What the hell? As you look back, Pepperdew's plane is sm smoking going down to the ground. That was a plot twist. Yeah, okay. You know what? Maybe I'm yeah. late to the party, but I'm beginning to think he may have had a point. <laughs> <laughs> This is where Dale starts shooting at everybody. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason he let them overtake him. Dale's not interested <laughs> okay, in Okay, now you're getting way too conspiratorial here. Just air to air missiles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, assist with the explosion, because planes aren't supposed to do that in the air. No, no. We're not really supposed to be doing that on the ground either. So if we're on the ground, on the ground, it's fine. It's safer because you can at least run away from the explosion, or or walk coolly oh. away as it explodes behind you. There is that, but I would still have to disagree that it is safer because on the ground, there's more likely to be people around. It's unlikely to be next to someone when it blows up in the air. Yeah, but then you have all of the spread out falling pieces versus. Yeah, but then you've still got, you know, the, if, you, if you actually look at the, the, the mathematics of it, statistically the odds of it hitting any individual person, unless you're in a built-up area at the time. Yes. Shard, um, the call goes up that a plane has um, had to make a forced landing. There's no more information given than that, um, other than you know it's somewhere along the route. Yep. Uh, it, it's supposed uh, to happen beyond eyesight from where you were, so it's it's come across the radios that there's a plane down. Right. 
I'm going to hop in the gyro and head that direction as okay. quickly as possible. Cool. The race continues on. And everyone lands from that point safely with um, Chuck taking first, with the Storm Ravens taking second, and Dale taking third. Mm -hmm. Hashtag I am Woot. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now because that means I got I get you know I get got first on two races, so you know that's good. If I get this third one as well, then I can pretty much just cruise the last one. <laughs> yes, you could just coast. I'm yeah. sure Chuck would do that. Was your competitive? That's streak. absolutely yeah. That is absolutely in, in yeah. my nature to uh, the, the thing that I really live for, which is acrobatic flying and barnstorming I'm, I'm just gonna let that one slide it'll be fine <laughs> yeah absolutely god so shard um yeah. you get to where the plane is you can, you can see from once you're airborne you can see the plume of smoke coming up um when you get there abelard is sat on the ground next to his plane looking quite pissed off um, well, he's the okay. plane isn't in terrible condition. The plane has landed rather than crashed. But there's a lot of smoke billowing from the engine. Fire extinguishers are a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. He was actually sabotaged. Probably. I'm going to land and pull out one of the fire extinguishers on the gyro and help put out whatever's smoking. Okay. So yours works. Is the first thing that he says as soon as you start opening up with the fire extinguisher. No shit. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> We're gonna need to talk to one of the ground crews. Someone's actively yeah. trying to kill you. Well, I think so. Who did you piss off? Do you want a list? Chuck okay, for one. That's... Well, you... pissing Midas off doesn't put you on any list he just forgets about you until the next time he has to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> sorry i was too busy thinking of more important things than my crush against you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah I'm gonna that, that, that's, that's not out. the worst of it that's that that's not the worst of it really yeah, that Storm Raven pilot shot at me. That's why I'm in trouble anyway. Told you. The Storm Raven pilot shot you. Yeah. Did anyone else? Well, actually, you know what? Who was who was behind the Storm Raven pilot? Do you remember? Because how was how was Dale doing? Uh, Dale was up up with us at some point. Um, I guess. Well, then there's something. probably some witnesses. Uh, well, crud. That's not a good thing for... Are we allowed to communicate through radio while you're racing? Yeah. Some some teams do it. So I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go back to the guy rope, hand him the uh, fire, uh, fire extinguisher to continue making sure that everything's cooling down and not going to get any worse. Yep. And I'm going to radio um, Midas. Uh, hey Midas, this is Mithra. Can you come in? Uh, hey Mithra, this is Midas. What can I do you for? Keep an eye on the bird behind you. That uh, raven is shooting other planes. Uh, say so what? Did I, what was that again? Uh, I, I thought I I must have misheard you. I thought you said it was shooting at people. At least one so far, and you're ahead of them. I'm assuming. Can, uh, can you do me a flavor? Uh, can you just quickly check in the competition rules and see whether that's allowed? Because if it is, I'm changing my tactics. I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> not allowed, actually. So, uh, not sure what's going on there, but they, they shot Pepperdew down. Really? Did Pepperdew tell you that? Uh, Pepperdew's fire extinguishers also aren't working. Yeah, well, I I would take everything that Pepperdew says with, uh, yeah. To be honest, an entire salt mine. 
you know? Half of you fine is probably going to be needed on this. <laughs> you concentrate on the race and keep an eye on your tail. That's all yeah, I'm trying can, to let you know. Yeah, we can, if nobody shoots me down, then we can look into this afterwards. If they do, then I'll believe him. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to get shot down, please. That would be ideal. <laughs> I'll leave you to the race. <laughs> so for, for, for clarity, um, the race was only about give or take an hour long. Um, yeah. It took you a while to get to the crash site, and by the time you got there, the, the, the race, certainly for the first three or four planes, had finished. Oh, okay. So already on the ground by that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it would be. I just will be standing next to Nelly after that, just looking at the storm raven. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should actually contact whoever's refereeing this to check the storm raven to see if anything. Because you can check guns point. to see if they fire. I am going to amble over because I'm assuming that it will be this um, common practice for them, as it was, say, in the RAF in World War II, to effectively tape over the, the gun barrels. Um, yeah. yeah. So it should be possible to see whether they've been fired. That's why you always had those ragged bits on front yeah. of fighter planes. Yeah. Yep. Because it was easier just to put fabric over the whole thing. Than try I mean, they may around. not have done that, of course. Plus, it may be if that, that only works for guns that are um, flush in the wings, which this may not have. I don't know the design that, uh, for this particular plane. But nevertheless, I'll take a wander over and see if it looks like it's been fired. I'll just congr be, use the excuse of congratulating them on their second place. Yeah, so um, planes that, that have uh, the guns flush with the wings would do that to maintain a certain amount of aerodynamics. Um, this one has the guns sitting proud from the wings. It does have the... Ah, that's a shame. You could always just lean up against one of the guns and feel like it's hot. Well, I mean, that was quite a while back. It probably would have not really going to... Uh, if they only just fired enough to shoot down Pepper Dew. Pepper Dew went down yeah, a That's while true. Back, that's so. true. Uh -huh. um, yeah, she looks at you with a, a smirk and says, thank you. <laughs> Hope you don't take, didn't take it personally that been on the ground before we took off, you know, the, it's the, the nature of the game. Yeah, I'm sure you'd have done the same. I'm sure. But nice flying, getting back up to second. I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a loadout uh, are you using? I mean, did you strip out for speed? No. If I took the yeah, guns see, off, that's... I could have probably caught you. Yeah, that's that's probably where you went wrong. You want, might want to think about doing that next time. I don't trust people. Just give give yourself that edge. I like to be able to defend myself, just in case someone starts shooting at me. Really? So you're fully loaded? Fully loaded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Each to their own. Aww. Doubly well done though for getting in second if, with with the extra weight on board. Like I said, I'm good. Amble back to Nelly, feeling a little less happy than I was. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine so long as you're not directly in front of her. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a problem. <laughs> what you do is you maintain right like next to them or on top of them until you get to the finish line and then you gun it. If you're flying directly above them, then you get to the finish line and you just land. <laughs> No, because then they hit, then they land before me, and they've won. Oh, true. In that case, then you should be flying under them, but you're not going to get as much speed down there. Aww. Yeah, well, you just reckon slipstream them all the way through, and then just <laughs> duck under. I'm seriously wondering uh, how much uh, speed I would drop. If I had Merlin just mount a couple of smoke pots before I, the next race, you know, smoke boxes shouldn't be that heavy. No, they shouldn't be that heavy. <laughs> definitely not as heavy as ammunition. I mean, you've got. Well, I don't think you have time for that before the next hours. race because you've got a couple three hours. hours three hours. 
Do you want to do that? Because I think that's no, a good idea. I'm just, I'm just gonna, just gonna uh, fly it as it was. Um, not even gonna put bullets in just in case because I don't intend for them to be in front of me if I can help it. So bullets in my gun wouldn't help me. I might need to do some defensive flying at some point. <laughs> yeah. And then, if that's necessary, it might have to be followed with some offensive flying. But I've killed people without pulling the trigger before. Mm. Or at least I've downed flames without pulling the trigger before. You both have. I, I seem to remember that the uh, market has tried to land on a plane. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> you can land the market on, the, on another plane. It's easy. Um, I'm going to ask Pepperdew after we get the fire out and whatnot if he needs a ride back or if he just wants to wait here until someone comes out to help get his plane moved uh i'll stay here until someone can get the plane moved thank you doctor thank you all right i'll um, send them your way i'll be lodging a complaint once uh once i get back to the race control do you want me to stick around because you seem to be worried that someone's out to get you and if you're out here by yourself that could be a problem they'd have to get here i think I think they're going to hit the plane rather than me. Okay. Like, not having fire extinguishers when they know the engine runs hot. Fair enough. All right, well, I'm going to take off then. Thank you, Doctor. I'm thinking I might amble over and uh, if they're around, have a word with Dale uh, now, having spoken <laughs> to the, the storm room. <laughs> okay. Um, I when Dale landed, he went straight into the um, the site office. The, the, the la the, this, the, you've landed at another air, airstrip. Yeah, so the, the second race is a return trip. So, um, yeah, two point points between... Yeah. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. So D Dale has gone into um, air traffic control. Um, as you start looking around for, him, for, uh, for them, they're coming out. Hey, uh, Dale. Did you see anything out of the ordinary in that race yes funny you should mention it I've just um, raised a protest was it the storm raven they opened fire yeah I heard a rumor to that effect <laughs> a rumor <laughs> <laughs> I think we may need to watch them on the way back it's either that or we crash them at the start and be done with it I'd rather not face any more crashes, thank you. Okay. We'll just do the watching thing then. Yes, the watching thing. Thank you. Just do yourself a favor and don't be in front of it for uh, yeah, any more of the race than you have to. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you. Did it look personal, by the way, or was it... Or do you think it was just because uh, Pepper Do was in second? I don't know. The Storm yeah. Ravens are pirates. I, know, I yeah. know them by reputation only. You see that funny little guy? He's been telling me ever since we got here that somebody's out to get him and he thinks they're sabotaging his plane. And I was just wondering if this was related or if he's just paranoid and this happens to be a jackass. They're pirates? I wouldn't put it past them to accept a payment to open fire on someone. Mm. Seems odd though to specifically pick on Pepper Do. I mean, what makes him so special? Your Help. guess is as good as mine. Yeah. He's rich. Mm. Eyes open, I guess. See what happens. Eyes on a swivel. Alright, head back to um, uh, oversee getting Nelly fueled up for the return trip. Okay, any special instructions like don't fill it all the way or... It's going to be pretty much the same fuel load that I had coming this way, I'd imagine, but possibly slightly modified because of um, prevailing wind conditions might be going in the opposite direction. You know, you know, might need to be going into a wind going one way and, and with the wind going the other way, that kind of stuff. But these are the calculations we already did yep. earlier in the day, so I'd have an amount already knowing what it needs to be for this, and I will just give them that instruction and watch them to make sure that that's what happens. <laughs> Keeping an eye on my plane. Okay, notice just roll in them, case as you're watching Pepper them, is not roll. mad. <laughs> just to, to clarify, there is more than um, 
a, a, more than a little difference in terms of paint jobs between yours and Pepper G planes. Yeah. Looking at them, you wouldn't well, mistake one for the other. Yeah. No, I know, but if Pepper G's already out, if, if it's something to do with the race that they're after, and they might then right. move on to the guy in the lead. So that's a three. That's lousy. I am going to spend a uh, Benny to re-roll that. Five. That's rather more like it. Calm down, Cap. I'm not feeding you. Okay, so yeah, got a five on my notice. Okay, yep, yeah, they, so, there's certainly nothing um, at ground level going on to indicate any uh, malfeasance at all. No one's yeah, messing with, cool. looking to mess with your plane. The ground crew are doing it exactly as you've been told. Um, didn't really no expect of... to see anything, but I wanted to know that I didn't see anything <laughs> because it wasn't there, not because I rolled low. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no signs of um, any rearming happen happening on the um, Storm Raven plane. Yeah, they probably only fired one quick, one short burst though, so they're really not going to need to rearm. Yeah, a sneaky surprise attack, you know, double damage to a backstab. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lining up for the return trip. Again, same routine. Pilots lined up on a, a row. The gun goes. Everyone sprints to their planes. And yeah. goes hell for leather. I love that the start of the race is not in the planes, but running to the planes. Mm. I used to love watching the old 24-hour Dumont races. Yeah. Yes. And whilst it's an absolutely mad way to start a race because yeah. people could get run over and all sorts. It looked so intense with everyone yeah. running to the cars. And health and safety wasn't really a thing. In the no, no, it really, so. no, it really wasn't. <laughs> so again, only got three terrible athletics. <laughs> you know, three is better than one. Three is better than one, yeah. Three is indeed better than one. Hi, Tal. So again, um, whilst not the first to reach their aircraft, um, you, were, you were beaten this time by both um, Dale and Morrigan, the, uh, the Storm Raven. I'm not so fussed about being in front of Morrigan this time. <laughs> <laughs> there are um, a number of pilots who are behind you as well, including one who apparently tripped over their shoelaces and just went straight on the ground. Whoops, always one. Probably Mulligan was there throwing banana peels <laughs> left and right while running the plane. So can I have an, uh, a roll to get the plane started again? Oh, it's an under pressure, get this thing going. That's an eight, so will it raise. Nice. So you peel out, as do a number of other pilots. The Morrigan is ahead of you at this time. Looks like they're going to get to the get airborne before you. Behind you is Dale, and then you've got um, both Brit pilots behind Dale. Okay, I'm not. When I take off, I am not going to be barnstorming. This is not the barnstorming race. But I am going to be flying at a lower altitude than would be normal okay. for this kind of race. Um, simply on the basis that it is my hope to overhaul Morrigan. And if Morrigan wants to shoot at me, they're going to have to come down. <laughs> and that will be obvious. <laughs> Right. And, and Midas doesn't really think too much about flying low, so he's just going to be flying lower than he should be. But not so low as to be, you know, dodging trees. Okay. So, piloting roll for the racing aspect then, please. That's terrible. I'm going to use chip on that one. Do you yell if anything I can do can uh, help add That's an 11. To... That's rather better. We'll take the 11. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think you should keep going and use a, a chip just to see if you can get some explosions. 
<laughs> no, because if I use all my chips, I'm liable to find I don't have any when I'm trying to avoid some explosions. Yeah. Or possibly roll yourself into a critical failure. Or yep. roll myself into a critical failure and get an explosion that way. <laughs> so, um, you've been racing for um, 15, 20 minutes. You've been not specifically going for it, you said, because you're not too fussed about them being ahead of you just yet. Yeah, um... With this tactic, I wasn't too fussed about them being ahead of me on the on the takeoff. But then I want to try and take the lead as soon as I can um, and have a similar run to last okay. time. But I'm using this tactic of flying at a lower altitude to where all the planes were flying last time so that I'll be able to tell if someone's coming in behind me. But specifically right. if Morrigan's yeah. coming in behind me. So the first thing that you see, um, say about 50 minutes into the race, Morrigan's still behind you. There's... Uh, a flash of sort of reddy orangey light from where the Morrigan is and then an amount of smoke and this black shape that is the Morrigan's aircraft starts sort of falling. Go Dale! <laughs> I hope. Nice. <laughs> Go somebody anyway. Yeah. A sane pilot at this point no longer needing to be uh, flying low so that they can tell where the Morrigan is lining up a shot on them would, would um, climb but this isn't the same pilot it's Chuck so he just won't consider it He'll just carry on flying where he is <laughs> so Chuck opens up the throttle and does as yeah, intended yeah. And speeds on just get there as fast as possible yeah then Chuck hears the Tim, 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 as bullets start ripping into the, his aircraft. That ain't right. Okay, who's behind me? The Morrigan. Where the hell did you come from? Down. Right, okay. I think a little defensive flying may be necessary at this point. So, if Morrigan's going to insist on trying to shoot at me, then... I'm going to alter my course somewhat. Uh, so right, what I'm looking for here is trying to turn this into an actual dogfight. So Morgan is having to maneuver to, to line up on me. Yeah. Trying to fly dangerously, but at the same time, not go far enough out of uh, off course that Morgan's better off just ignoring me and overtaking. I don't want to let her overtake. So, a, I don't know whether this is a combination of impromptu navigation with piloting to try and keep both. Yeah, up. I'm going to need both roles. So, let's yeah. have the piloting role to handle the maneuvers and the navigation yeah. to, to stay on time. So, that's an eight on the piloting role, which is okay. not great, but it is a raise. So, I will let it stand. And navigation is terrible, so I'm going to be spending a, bit, a chip. That's rather more... Oh, that is way more like it. Jeepers. Okay, 21 on a D6. I'll take yes. that. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that's a good use of a chip. Nice. Okay, so you're flying defensively. You're zipping around the trees just a yeah, little bit yeah. lower. Yeah. I'm hoping that Mulligan will follow me close enough to maybe crash into something, but not expecting it. <laughs> just trying to make life difficult. You can hear Morrigan squeezing off bursts of fire. Going wild of you. Every time Morrigan fires, you've jinked and you're not where she thought you were going to be. Yeah. Doing my best A-wing pilot thing. <laughs> so it's probably a very good job that there are no convenient Star Destroyers for me to fly into the bridge of. Because I'm like, <laughs> just not going to resist the temptation. <laughs> so the, the Morrigan is having a devil of a job trying to stay on target. I'm primarily paying attention to the Morrigan, but I'm also keeping an eye out in case while we are doing this, someone else is, is sneaking past. Because if they do, I'm going to let them. <laughs> I don't mind somebody else getting first, so long as it's not the Morrigan. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, can I have a notice roll then, to see, see if you spot what's happening? Uh, nope, that's a crit fail. <laughs> Double one. <laughs> I suppose okay. I can uh, pay any I attention from my damn thing. position in the bad deck, can I? If I'm 
been watching this. So you're, you're hearing um, a commentary of sorts. They've got watch people along the the way. So no. all's fine. You've got the, the rundown. Um, all of a sudden, they haven't said why, but apparently there's a chase going on between Chuck and the Morrigan. And that's allowing the Brit to catch up. Uh, I'm going to radio Chuck. Excuse me? What are you doing? This is this is not an ideal time. I'm just a little bit busy being <laughs> shot at by one of the other competitors who is a cheating bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I am going to contact ground control then. Yep. And I am going to inform them that Chuck is under fire from the Morrigan. <laughs> and lodge an official complaint. I understood. Like that is the second complaint we've had yes. lodged against the Morrigan. Um, another race lodged a complaint in the first race. Excellent. Well, perhaps you could do all this, deal with it. We're launching planes now. Excellent. Let us know if you need any help. <laughs> a, a glance out of the um, the gondola of the bad debt. That they are launching two planes, um, two devastators. So they're for a start, they're biplanes. They're not the yeah. fastest of planes, and they're going to intercept races. They're not oh, going to catch this. us before the end of the race, um, are they? <laughs> on, on the plus side, you, they're on a, a meeting course because this is the return they're leg. So the, the planes end. are coming from yeah, the other way. True. Do I hop in the maquette? I mean, as a combat plane goes, the Devastator is very rugged and can pack a reasonable punch. If it gets into a dogfight, it's probably going to win. But if it's got I to try say... and catch something, mm. that's not so easy. Yeah, what's the top speed on the maquette? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's 200. I have a feeling it's 200. Uh, it's not on the images, it is on the Sorry. item. No, it's on the vehicles. It's on the vehicles. Uh, da, 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 220. So the rush could uh, cause some difficulty. So yeah, you, you are faster than the, than the Devastator. You could, you're still slower than the racers. Yeah. But you could at least worry them. Yeah. And you're I'm packing just... a 60 cal, whereas the Devastators, yeah. if they're stock, probably packing. Um, 40s and 30s. How long did the first race take? Took about an hour. Just under an hour. How far through are we? Uh, about a quarter of the way. 50, about 15, 20 minutes in. Yeah, okay. Um, I am going to hop into the maquette and stay at elevation. Okay. Basically head in the direction of the races. Okay. With the aim of meeting them at about the halfway mark. And what I want is to maintain sufficient elevation so if Morrigan starts opening fire again on Chuck, I can put some shots across her bow, so to speak. Right. With the 60 cal. Chuck, can I have I, another yeah. piloting and navigation roll, please? Yeah. I, I have a plan, by the way. Uh, okay. He's come up with a new change of tactics, so you, oh, might, yeah. need, well, you might want different roles from me. I want to try and lure the Morrigan in. Okay. Um, straightening up my course again, opening up the throttle to full. But I'm looking for a, a tight space, if possible, whether it be stands of trees, buildings, rocks, whatever, something that I could fly between. Okay. Opening up my throttle is not low enough to be needing to fly between still. Um, I haven't got that much altitude. Opening up my throttle and going straight. And as she pulls in behind me to line up the shots, then throttling back and dropping between whatever those objects are. So she has no room to steer either way, has got to either go past me or slow right down. <laughs> and, then the next, and then the next tactic depend the next move depends on how she responds to that. Right. This is outright piloting. We're, we're ignoring yeah, the race now. This, this is, is outright piloting. Outright piloting. Does barnstorming come in at That's this stage? That's seven on a piloting roll. Excellent. Okay. So, you you line this up perfectly. 
Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Find an, a nice um, alley of trees a line, lining a road. Perfect for, for what you're asking Perfect. for. You straighten up. Just as you're about to throttle back and drop, you hear the gunfire. But it doesn't hit you. You've throttled back and the Morrigan sails ahead and has to go onwards. Sailing past the Morrigan, with a little bit of smoke coming out of the engine, is Dale in the Bloodhawk. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm opening up and going after them, obviously. <laughs> Am I going to have to patch Dale up again? <laughs> God damn it. That's what Superbow was invented for. <laughs> okay, so um, it's what Madonna, you still there? Uh, yep. Uh, do you want to do me a favor and have Merlin on standby? Because I don't got any bullets, so uh, it's possible that I might slightly break Nelly a bit. I'm playing Overwatch now. I will pass on message. I am willing to put a bullet through uh, Morrigan's window. Uh, sorry, I meant to say wing, but actually. <laughs> well, it's, it's window that, that um, is my target, uh, given, given the possibility if I can overhaul her and get the right angle. I'm kind of thinking of trying to put one of my wheel bearings through her cockpit. <laughs> wow! I'll see what I can do. I don't got no bullets. <laughs> yes. I have bullets. And um, she's being rude. Landing gears are optional anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, I will ask for the ground control to pass on the message to Midas. Since I'm to assuming... Merlin, so, to Merlin, sorry. <laughs> um, yep. Since presumably I'm guessing he's not on radio. Um, it's not like he can wander around with headset comms. Um, can I line up a shot on Morrigan? Not yet. You're still a ways out. Still, yeah. still heading in. Yeah. Okay. When I can, do let me know. Oh, yes. I Rest assured. Try not so, to die. Midas, there's now three planes in this weird situation. <laughs> yeah. You clearly have the faster plane. Um, as it is, you're gaining on the Morrigan. There's yeah. no question about it. I'm obviously trying to come in over the top because that's the only way I can make that attack. <laughs> yeah. Does, does the Morrigan's plane have rear guns? No. Well, no, some, no, right, okay. some, no, some, some in this setting do. Yeah. So. Oh, plenty, plenty, pl pl plenty of planes do in this setting. Uh, the Morrigan's plane is a single seat fighter. It's a heavy fighter, but a single seat. Okay, it's a frazzy. A what? And uh, brownie points to anybody who can identify where the frazzy heavy fighter comes from. I bet nobody does. It's a bit obscure. Even I'm giving some side eye at that one. Yeah. Uh, that is the non heavy fighter from Babylon 5. Ah, right. So, what what is your plan? Your are you, are, you, are you genuinely wanting to put your will fairy? Yeah, through, through my, my idea is try and come in over uh, over the top and smash down as hard as I can with the the wheel fairing on her cockpit. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I don't anticipate actually taking out Morrigan, but if I can, if I can break the cockpit window, that is going to seriously impact her flying skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the Morrigan appears to have switched targets. At least, doesn't appear to be paying much attention to you. Because you can still hear and see now muzzle flashes from Morrigan's cannons. Um, Dale puts the Bloodhawk straight into vertical. And as you pair go forward, it seems to go behind you. Yeah, that was the other option I was thinking rather than the one I used for <laughs> <laughs> trying to get Morgan out to overtake me. Can I have a piloting role, please? Because...
I hope so. I with, certainly hope so. With confusion from the Morrigan. Not with that roll. So my last, my final chip goes into the pot. <laughs> Make it a good one. It's an eight. That's good enough. That's... You certainly felt something give beneath as the plane landed on something solid that then Excellent. gave way underneath. And as you carry on flying, you see in your mirror the Morrigan's plane hit a tree and then spin. Oh as it dear, what trees. a pity. Yay, more plane parts. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might need to get a, a ground crew out there. It looks like for somehow the Morrigan has uh, managed to crash. I don't know what happened. It was a terrible, terrible accident. Dale's voice comes over the radio after that. Um, crash confirmed. The Morrigan has retired from the race. Unknown mechanical failure. <laughs> I love Dale so much. <clears throat> oh dear, what can the matter be? Morrigan's plane flew into a dragon tree. <laughs> And with, with that part of things over, you look up to the sky and see that one of the British planes is ahead of you. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm going to do my best, to, to, but I will, I will take second or third if it comes to it. I've won everything till now. I can afford <laughs> it. <laughs> so you, you throttle up. Can I have a piloting roll, please? Yeah, to I get hope the so. best you can. I really hope so. Eleven. Yes. Nice. I like having a D12 in piloting. It's good. Especially a D12 when you're rolling high instead of low. Yes. Yeah. So you you start putting distance between you and Dale and Cat gaining on the bread. Um. And then Dale starts catching you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the friendly <laughs> Yep. <laughs> they pass you and get a fair distance ahead and you, then you start catching them again. That would be a piece of fancy flying there. Just as you're thinking, I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them, there's a small um, lick of flame come out from the engines Turbo. and the thing takes yes. off like a rocket again. <laughs> Dale, you son of a bitch. Why do you think I am nitrous? <laughs> why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I this think is I why just you think should. I remember being told not to mess with the engine when I suggested <laughs> yep, that. Yep. Now, out of character, I absolutely would not uh, put, use nitrous because I used to play Dark, the Dark Future board game. And I never finished a race using Nitrous in that game. Every single time. I, even if I just turned it on for one phase, the engine blew. I never finished a race using Nitrous. My I, dice just hate me too yeah. much. Nitrous is also very, very uh, bad on engines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it needs a lot more <laughs> maintenance, and I don't trust him on that one. What do you mean, though? He's the specialist. Yes, I know. But, you see... My, it's not my dice, it's my luck. It affects other people's dice as well if they're rolling on my behalf. <laughs> this is true, I've seen it happen. This is true. <laughs> as I said, I will accept second or third place on uh, this one, so uh, I will do as, as best I can, but if they beat me, yeah. they beat me. No, with, with that roll, um, Dale beats you, but not by that much. Um, the Brit tries to muscle you into third place, but you're just too fast. His plane does not have the speed. Yeah, nice plane, Cowboy. So, for the th second race of the day, Dale comes in first, Chuck second, Dagonet for the Brits third. <laughs> and what, what uh, place was uh, the... I uh, can't remember her na their, their name. The Morrigan? Yeah. DNF. If we're lucky, Boot Hill. <laughs> It's made over three counties. 
Yeah, do I do I need to make a piloting roll to land? Because I might have had some I might have some damage to my landing gear. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the one that pointed it out, and I was hoping no one would because. <laughs> oh, oh, son of a glitch! I have failed my land my piloting roll. <laughs> oh shit! Now you have yeah. no landing gear, and you have no chips. No, and I got no chips. No. Try so. landing in a lake. You know, we've done that. I can't, I can't be. Looks like, but it's not like a critical. We've got some work to do before the next race. <laughs> it's not a critical failure. No. So Nelly is not wrecked. No. It's, but it's just uh, not a good landing. I just nicked a bit of paint on the bottom. <laughs> if, if if you were landing in a farmyard, it'd be fine because you'd have dug a very nice furrow. <laughs> but um, yeah, unfortunately, you. Um, Need a new wheel on the uh, on the the, the, yeah. the the actual fairing itself is okay, but the wheel, but the wheel was man, was uh, flat. Sense. The tire was flat. The wheels buckled. Yeah. yeah. At least it's an easy. To but that was the second oh, yeah. race of the day, which means you've got a maintenance day tomorrow. I'm uh, <laughs> to find parts. Sorry about that. I guess you got some work to do. I uh, I don't know how that happened. Uh, oh, really, I don't. It's just one of life's mysteries. <laughs> Looks almost as if it impacted with some broken glass or something, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. I love the sound of the glass. Oh! Like cute Kitty is cute. <laughs> and, and I will give Dale a, a round of applause for coming in first while he's getting the little he, she, they, whatever Dale may actually be, is getting the, uh, the attention from, uh, for having one. Yeah, they, they, they throw you a salute and a smile. You know, when someone's rich enough, maintenance on engines doesn't matter, so using uh, nitrous makes sense. This is true. <laughs> oh, my accent is acknowledged terrible. Uh, <laughs> my excuse is that the character is half British, half American. So, therefore, his accent's really confused anyway. <laughs> I have no excuse. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a reason that I have the uh, the disclaimer about accents down on the bottom at of the, the bottom, screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I need to get, the, 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 get that up. Yeah. <laughs> we acknowledge that they're bad, and we revel in it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> She's got a little black hole. So, throughout maintenance day, aside from the various maintenance tasks on the um, aircraft, the race control asks all the pilots in for a briefing on the barnstorming race to go over okay, the course I, in fine detail. You know, I got confused. I thought we just did that. <laughs> uh, Merlin, for repairs yeah. onto Nelly, would you care I get to make. To finally, roll my best stat. Would you care to make a repair roll, please? Wait, I thought your best stat was weird science stuff. No, um, I get a plus two or a plus four on repairs. So... Yep. Oh, God. Wow. You, 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 you can throw <laughs> chips in if you wish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. do some time. chips. I mean, if you don't need any raises because it's a simple fix, then that's actually good enough. It's better yeah. to have raises because we don't want you to die. <laughs> you know, I, it's... That's actually nice to hear because I wasn't a hundred percent convinced. <laughs> Look, planes are expensive. <laughs> this is yeah, my plane. Thank you very much. Are replaceable. True. That's a point, actually. Yeah, it's his plane. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Anyway, I will spend a chip. Because... Now, are there I any? I'm not have the best roll on my best stat. Oh man. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> better. Oh, actually, quite a lot better. Are there any modifications that um, you may have been asked to do or are intending to do while you've got access to the aircraft? Nobs, nobs, nobs. Nitrous oxide. Do it. Just because and just, and just set up like a button. Isn't that going to be completely... You'd need a remote control for the uh, triggering, because I don't think that Chuck would ever press the button. Or rather, given Fish's luck with dice, Fish would never press the button. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably true. Yeah. yeah. If you put it there, I might actually be forced to use it and blow up my plane just because it's in character to press the button. 
the, what, the next race is the barnstorming one, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't it need would... the speed so much on the barnstorming. Yeah, it's really more about maneuverability and piloting mm. skill. I mean, it's, it's still a timed race. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of worried that the uh, Nelly is going to die during the barnstorming because there are no chips left. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it could be a problem. Um, I think, um, can I put in a plea now that I think I deserve a chip for taking out a plane with my wheel? <laughs> Actually, that's a very good shout. I'm Did inclined to agree survive? on that one. I got a chip back! I got a chip back! Yeah, question. Did Morgan survive? And she was flying with for the Brits, wasn't she? No, Morgan was no, flying she... as an independent. She was flying as an independent. And... Okay. No body was found at the site of the crash. Yeah, uh huh. That means there's a free plane, right? Well, there's bits of a plane. It comes unassembled. Yeah. It's, it's like an airfield. You might get model. some spares out of it. If you get there before whoever else gets some spares out of it. I can make I was a just... with the other bits of plane that I have. Uh, we I... don't need to steal parts anymore. We are rich, okay? Don't say that. We <laughs> a deep cut rich. here for the Star because Wars fans. Gold yet. Merlin is going to invent the ugly. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I like the ugly. Well, the, the, the ones like I've the seen, uglies. I like. Uglies were a yes. great idea. It's all, yeah, all they my, are. It's all of my ships in the X universe. It's just yeah, Talati shields, Paranid engines. Yeah, the oh, ugly. Oh. <laughs> yep. It's the way they work. I'm just wondering about Madonna staying groundside this time with the maquette. Um, and uh, trying to check out why Morrigan was gunning people down, whether it was just a spontaneous thing or whether there was a hit to put out. That's a nefarious plot at play here. Well, the movie is just a, you know, a way of winning, then <laughs> oops, that didn't work. But if it's actually a plot... Yeah. I would be more inclined to think that it was more of a plot because there's no way that they would have been able to win. That the shooting at people disqualifies them from winning the race. Well, only only if they don't get away with it. <laughs> yeah, but with the amount of uh, bullets put in the air and how many people saw, there's no way that they would have gotten away with it. I think on the maintenance day, I'm going to see if I can seek out Morrigan's ground crew. Okay. Not overly difficult. They're, they're somebody, the ones kind of kicking their heels. <laughs> somebody loaded that gu loaded that plane for combat. I just want to talk. Ground crew just did yep, there's, there's ground, yeah, there's there's Dale's not plane was clearly loaded because there was yeah. a fight going on between Dale and Morgan. So yes, not everybody stripped out the planes for speed. Yeah. Hey, I'm this, just this curious is... as to who gave the orders. Don't forget that. Dale was flying a replacement plane, so it's not their normal race plane. No, I'm assuming that Dale just had their the standard um, plane shipped down. But even, but yeah, even so, um, even if the other, even if Dale's other plane had the in, had the weapons removed for uh, for weight, this one still had bullets in. I mean, I didn't take the gun off Nelly. I just didn't load it to save yeah. the, a little bit of weight. Not a lot of weight because it's only got one small gun, so it's not like the heavily armed ones that ammunition actually makes a difference. True. The amount of ammunition the maquette carries, for example, weighs probably almost as much as Nelly. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't a requirement for bullets to be removed, it's just that you aren't supposed to be shooting at each other. Yeah, yeah. it's just that in my case, I didn't put any bullets into yeah. the plane in order mm -hmm. to keep the weight down. Um, other people didn't necessarily do that. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to talk to um, the Morrigan's ground crew, they're fairly easy to find because they haven't got a plane to mess with. I actually yeah. want to talk to um, Pepperjee's ground crew. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Midas wants to talk to them about whether there were any problems with the plane as they knew. Were they allowed to do their job or was Pepperjee getting in the way? Trying to get an idea as to whether the problems could be um, self-created by Pepperdew because he was so paranoid that he was interfering and getting in the way and thus causing the problems that he thought were down to sabotage, or whether they did their job absolutely fine and yet mysteriously the virus was working. 
Alright, let's have a, um, a performance roll from you for socialising with them. Performance rather than persuasion? If, if you want to go on persuasion, that, you, 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 whichever you prefer of the two. Whichever I you prefer of the two, because... Performance is a d6, persuasion is a d4, d4 but plus with one. a plus yeah. one bonus. Mm. So... Yeah, go on, I'll do the performance because of... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Bloody hell. So yeah, an 11 on performance. Yes. So everything that comes back from his ground crew is that they were very much, very hard done by. Um, he would scru scrutinise everything they did. Have you done this? Have you done that? Make sure you do that. And it, it, he micromanaged is the term. Um, yeah. He would not let them do what they needed to do to properly preventive maintenance the aircraft because he wanted specific things looked at when they were trying this to is, get the, the job done. This is what I was thinking. A micromanaged crew never performs as well as one that is just trusted to do the job that they know how to do. Yeah, that's so true. His problems could be caused by his own micromanagement. We still don't have proof that anyone is actually sabotaging him. Yeah, he was shot at. He was shot down. But there's no proof that there's a bigger conspiracy yet. Yeah. And when it comes to micromanaging and paranoia being mixed together, it just feedback loops on itself. Yeah. So, Drop, was there anything particularly you wanted to be talking to the Morrigan's crew about? <sighs> To be honest, I'm just going to be asking them whether they loaded up her plane for combat. If so, why? Yeah, she asked for it. Huh. Just specifically Did she said. Say why? No, actually. She did just have a meeting beforehand, but she's been trying to sort out some uh, recruitment. Police, that's for certain. Uh, who was she meeting with? Some guy with a weird accent. Um, weird what accent. Kind of weird accent. <laughs> no, you, you, you sound Russian. This guy had a weird accent, like I don't know, French, <coughs> French maybe. No, not French. Something. I've not heard it before. Um, just a weird Morals. accent. Uh, we, we've heard. heard you could describe. We've I've heard got... this kind of accent before, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to give a description based on the uh, the drawing that we have. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's him. It, yeah. Okay. So. You might want to go back to the bad debt and make sure that no one's trying to uh, infiltrate. Infiltrations <clears throat> or something. I figured it was something to do with recruiting new pilots because uh, the Storm Ravens took a hit fairly recently and um, they're trying to re recruit. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> I'm sure we didn't see that. Uh, Fish, Fish you're, you're silent. Sorry, yeah, I was messing around with, these, with um, voice meters, so I was muted. Uh, yeah, we, we know were. nothing about any about the Storm Ravens. We've never encountered them before. Never met no. Storm Ravens. No, we no. know nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all about them, and I wish I could remember what I called them when we didn't use them before. Uh, it's something not polite. <laughs> Tweeties. Um, right. Huh. I I'm going to seek out um, Midas, and indeed Merlin, and point out that the oddly accented gentleman which Merlin will know about because he was up on the bad debt at the time, but uh, Midas has not got a freaking clue. I told Merlin's, you, it, it, my accent is not my fault, okay? Oh, no, it was, it's, um, my dad's from one place and my mom's <laughs> from another. What can I say? Anything you like, apparently, in that accent, but uh, there was nothing to say against you for a change. Um, no, there is a gentleman who is tied up with the ship problem we have been dealing with. Was I also seen meeting that. with Morrigan. Prior to her oh. up. Was that the first Dallas. race or the second race? Second race. I assume. Well, if you spoke to her grand crew, her grand crew would be at this end, which is the first race. Oh, right, okay. Logically, because yeah, the other end was our, our ground crew. In that case, first a, a, a race. Yes, my point. apologies. So I, I don't see how that could be anything to do with me, though, because uh, why would she go for Peppadoo first? 
unless whoever it was just said take out the Dawson dagger. Would seem likely. Uh, simply a uh, be careful and keep your eyes open for strange uh, European accented people. So basically, what you're saying is keep an eye out for people who might want to kill me and don't let them. Um, that sounds like good advice. Yes, but now you know there are people who may want to kill you, specifically. Thing is, if these people want to kill me because of the ship thing that you guys were involved in that I didn't really have anything to do with, then they probably want to kill you as well. You might want to yeah. think about that. We have easier situation. Plus, big surprise once you come back to the bed. Later. I have no idea what you're talking about. No. <laughs> and don't let it distract you. We will keep that dead safe. You keep your eyes open down here. Okay, eyes open. Uh, yeah, so I think I am basically going to have to depart back up to uh, the bad debt. I don't imagine anyone's going to have seen the guy down here. Okay. If he is evil secret agent type and any degree of competence at all, he's not exactly going to have been drinking in the pub. <laughs> he's going to be lurking, not looking. But on Twitch, we like lurkers, just saying. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Yes, as long as you're not planning to murderize us in the middle of a race. Um, yeah. I suppose I can swing past the bar just on the off chance. Yeah. Um, I've got the description, both physical and accentual. And roughly when they were around. So, persuasion, I guess? Yep. Okay. Since I'm not actually out and out trying to intimidate people, which is <laughs> I what mean, you I could try to intimidate the right? Like. But... Uh, so, d4. Five. Oh, no, four. Because that tops out. Tops in it. Hang on a minute. Four, actually. <laughs> Got all excited then. <laughs> what was it 17 you got, Shard? Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> I see. we got a contender, have we? 12. Challenge. We've got a contender going. 13. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. God, <laughs> the champion. That's still two races. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, yes, a couple of folks in the bar did hear someone with an unusual accent. Um, who did meet with the Morrigan in the bar over in that corner over there. They had a, a quiet conversation and then the Morrigan left and flew the race. And he got in his car and went somewhere. Not I seen him around before. Noticed... I suppose you noticed what kind of car he had. No. Um, just a black one. Probably the Batman here. Um... Okay, so not from here. Okay, that's just weird, basically. Um, did he speak to anybody else? Only to order a drink. So I spoke to the bar. Yeah. Well, I spoke to the bar. Hmm. Did Morgan appear to be expecting him? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, that's uh, worrying but unproductive. So I'm going to head back up to the bad debt because, yeah, potentially somebody As might you get to the Lloyd, there. there's, there's one other thing. Oh, okay, Columbo. <laughs> he kind of sounded like the British pilots, but not. Straight. Are we being attacked by an Aussie? I, I, I can only uh, imagine if imagine if the Brits were singing what they were saying rather than saying it. It's the only Who way I Welsh, can... Welsh, look you. <laughs> it's the only I'm way I can think to describe it. I'm going to look at him as though it. he's completely insane. Um, it's the only thing, way I can think to describe how he sounded. It was foreign, but not a country I'm aware of. Huh. More of a musical accent. 
going to okay yes I'm going to attempt to find Midas Midas I believe you have experience with British accent yours on notwithstanding what you need someone who can do a British accent <clears throat> to be honest I have practiced sounding more like my father on occasion well uh, any any more accents of uh, your homeland or that homeland Melodic. Musical. Melodic. The but one of you sing. That's kind of pretty much everybody that isn't English. I mean, they okay. say, you know, you, you got like your, 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 your lilts and your brogues and your... Basically, everybody that isn't English on that island seems to be described as melodic or musical. So, somebody with the... The Welsh are the guys with the choirs, though. Welsh. Yeah, they, they, they have, like, choirs. Singing's a big thing for them. I don't get it. I've heard you try to sing. I can believe it. Yeah, no I'm Welsh heritage. Yes. Okay. So the odds are better than average. We're looking for a tall, built guy, or a very short, built guy, with black hair. <laughs> <laughs> so either a prop forward or a hooker. Yeah. So specific. They said, look, mate, <laughs> if he's from the valleys, the odds are he's a minor and therefore short and built. No, well, I'm sure they'd have sent an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's from more North Wales, then he's more likely to be tall. <laughs> but still, probably as wide as he's high. I mean, given that we've he's got. Descended from Glendower, or whatever he is or not, isn't it? Given, given that we've got two Americans in, in this group, we should just consider the Welsh to also be British and not understand what the problem is. <laughs> no, it's when you consider the Welsh to be English. That's when my eye starts twitching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no Welsh heritage and it would make my eye twitch. Yes. Yes, um, yeah, I keep forgetting you do. I keep thinking yours was more Scots. My, yeah, so my great grandmother, very Welsh. Hey, fish, you might want to restart your cam. Oh yeah, uh, slideshow yeah, again. We will do the camera thing again. So, any other activities planned for maintenance day, Robinson? Did you decide if you were going to fit anything uncommissioned into Nelly? <laughs> Until you I'm, I'm no, I'm going to avoid doing anything. You have unfettered access while you're repairing the landing me. gear. <laughs> <laughs> now clearly, clearly this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a sports event, right? It would be unsportsmanship for me to give such a huge advantage to one person. <laughs> when, when was the carburetor invented? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was. It definitely, it definitely was. was invented, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we know it was invented. <laughs> um, around about probably 1887. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, that, that's earlier than I thought. Yeah. First yeah. used on a tricycle. Oh, as wow. expected. There's a big difference between the technology existing and the technology actually yeah. making it into things. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Quite yeah. often, they the realization that this thing somebody built 40 years ago might just help the device I'm <laughs> working on now actually, isn't yeah, an that's... easy one. That's the first modern carburetor. The first carburetor was 1826. Wow, the carburetor was 100 years old, 10 years before this game I, started. Yeah. Well, I thought a carburetor was one of those Italian mopeds. <laughs> how about how about fuel injection then? Maybe Merlin can do something with fuel injection to boost the efficiency. <laughs> well, don't forget that a lot of the engines in aircraft that have been around a while at this point like the uh, the Devastator would be radial engines right and it's yeah. only about nowish that the inline engines are coming into play so a lot I'm of new a wild aircraft guess from the picture that the Dawson Dagger has a, a radial engine yeah the Dawson it Dagger has a radial like it. yeah the Dawson Dagger has a radial the um, the Bloodhawk has an inline <laughs> I think the cat's sneezing. Quite possibly, yeah. I thought it was a car outside letting off the dump valve. Because I could hear the sneeze Excuse from me. here. 
<laughs> yeah. Back in a sec. Carry on. I'm going back up to the. Uh, I'm going back up to the uh, bad bit anyway. Yeah, absolutely, Sage. Bless you, Pippin. Um, yeah. So, in terms of carburetor and injection, I mean, diesels, if I remember rightly, are injection anyway. So, injection's probably. I'd need to look it up. Injection's probably around as well. Yeah, most likely. I mean, diesel engines operate based off of way more pressure than gasoline. Gasoline requires fuel air mixture it needs to be I, I would basically... like to point out that it's not necessary for the players to understand what the character is doing <laughs> in fair. order for Merlin to in some way turbocharge the, um, the no, play. No. We literally just have to say, use your science skill please. Yes, <laughs> we science. don't actually have <laughs> to come up with a working blueprint. <laughs> I'm a propeller head. I get, I get invested in these things. I do apologize. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, this is why I love games like, um, for example, Space Master, which has a really quite detailed Starship mm. design system. Far more detailed than a lot of games. You look at like, yes. a mega traveler, Space Master. And then you get into stuff like, say, um, the old D20 Space, which that the design system on that was, was pretty much pick what rooms you want in it and, bung an engine and, and apply an engine. And we're not going to give you any more detail. Skin is overrated, Drut. Well, it, all it's for is just to hold the stuff inside it. So, to be honest, just yeah, like to say, it, just a pair of gloves will do the job. But... He's, he's got a lot of pet daggers on his feet. Yes, he has. <laughs> he daggers. doesn't want to be held. He is not going to be held. Compression of heat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pass. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, that, that's why they have glow... Well, even for diesel, they need glow plugs rather than spark plugs. Yep. Yeah. Because they work on the heat rather than the spark. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yep. I didn't know. I actually cars have. Anymore. My car is diesel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Sage. <laughs> yep. Valid. <laughs> valid. So moving on. Um, anyone else have any other plans for um, the rest slash maintenance day other than? Chuck, who needs to be at the briefing for the race tomorrow? Because they're going over the, the course and what is going to be required. Just briefing and overseeing the repairs to Nelly, that's that's my only plan. So, at the briefing, um, all all ten of the remain sorry, nine of the remaining pilots are there, because for some reason the Morrigan's absent. Mm, I that. Um, there's a map up on a board showing a very specific course. Basically, mapping out all the areas you are going to be needed to fly through, around, over. Um, the planes will be taken off in threes, so as not to get too crowded at the various I was assuming start that points. it would be staged. <laughs> yes. And who's flying with who will be done on a random draw. The map shows a fairly um, complex course um, of markers and stunts, for want of a better word. So after taking off, your first um, barnstorm is through. A, you're flying through a zeppelin hangar. There's no zeppelin oh. in it, just straight through the hangar. I'm glad you clarified oh, that. Uh, the course then heads out to the coast where there's an interesting inlet um, that has around a cliff, there's a, an inlet cliff that um, I should have drawn a picture of it because it would be far easier than trying to describe it. <laughs> there's a, a, a rock pillar in the middle and the inlet goes literally in and round and out, forms a perfect loop around this pillar uh -huh. and you have to go around that. There's no Devil's specific... Canyon. Yeah. There's no um, specifics around what altitude, you just have to fly around the pillar. So you could do it at 500 feet and not risk the rocks. Or you could be really flash and hug the rocks all the way around. If you, you think your plane can turn that tightly. Yeah. Uh, then heading back to the airstrip through, a, through an airplane hangar, which is slightly smaller than the Zeppelin hangar. Smaller than the Zeppelin hangar, yeah. But I've done that before as well. Coming out the, out of there, you then head across to the river under one of the bridges. It's low tide. Because at high tide, the water practically touches the bridge. Never yeah. make it. 
coming off of the bridge through a barn. <laughs> a little barn. Little barn moving. Uh, through a barn. <laughs> Staying along the coast to um, the docks, where there is uh, a, a dock crane that has been specifically left in a state that you can fly through the uprights holding it upright. Ooh. That sounds like a fun one. You all have fun now. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, I've got this, probably the smallest plane in this uh, thing. I have a huge advantage here. <laughs> and then back yeah, to you're, land. You're at a lower... Uh, advantage because you don't have enough many uh, enough chips. Enough chips, yeah, yeah. But mm. the uh, the NPCs may not have chips at all. True. Mm. Mm. there going. I've counted how many chips Knight has used. I know he's <laughs> got the chips left. Of all. <laughs> 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 yeah. He has all the chips now, sir. <laughs> So, now you've seen the course. There is a copy of the map for each pilot to take away. Good, good. And your random draw consists of Dale and Dagonet flying for the Brits. Oh, nice. Okay, let's have a good, clean fight. Don't want to see any biting or clenching. <laughs> <laughs> now, seriously, guys. Good luck. This looks like it's a, a, a heck of a course. It should be fun to fly. Looking forward to it. Dagonet just looks at you and nods. Doesn't even smile. What? Doesn't say a word. Tough crowd. Tries not to think. He's hiding his Welsh accent! <laughs> <laughs> As Dagonet turns and walks out. Dale leans into you and says, I've heard the Brits call him Dag the Mad. Oh, this should be fun. I hope he doesn't fly dangerously. He can fly as dangerous as he wants, so long as he doesn't do it next to me. <laughs> it's the classic wrap yourself around a tree, not me. Yeah. Preferably, I want him flying dangerously behind me, because I don't want to have to dodge the, the wreckage. Yeah, mm. Wrap a yellow airplane around an old oak tree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... I have some mad respect for Dale sitting here flying planes with broken ribs and talking and yeah, mocking yeah. people and not even complaining. Dale's doing good. Good night, Alexia. No. Oh. Good night, Alexia. Sleep well. Good Alexia. I got a difficult decision to make here. Um, Madonna, are you busy tomorrow? Uh, Madonna is not busy. Because I got this map, and I'd like somebody on the other end of the radio with the map so that you can be calling out what the next, uh, um, you know, event is. Valley co-driver time. As I go, and I don't really trust any of the others to do it. Kiki camera, and yes. Whatever the hell the problem is with your camera, it's it a weird is one. I will keep looking. I do know. Yeah. But. It's double. USB port? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, next time I'll try it in a different port. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, oh, but yeah, in, no, that makes sense. I think I've got it plugged into the USB 3, so it should be able to Whatever. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, yes, Madonna can indeed make use of her navigation skills and the map to give you. Time and pacing, yeah, and direction. It is literally rally co-driver. Yeah, I'm this. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of figuring. Right. Anyone else have anything to do on maintenance day, or shall we start the race? In, in terms of the race day, yeah. I have nothing to do on ma maintenance day except making sure that the gyro, the, the gyro is uh, fueled up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to basically station myself at the most dangerous portion of the bar storming. So you're going to the docks then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm going to set up and wait to have to helicopter somewhere. I do actually have one more question that I want to ask. I'm assuming that he is out of the races at this stage. But what is going on with Pepperdue? Hmm. 
<laughs> That's a probably so, a bigger question than. Pepperdew <laughs> is um, in a huff. He's packed his stuff and is shipping out. He doesn't have another plane to bring down. Apparently, um, he's fired his entire ground crew. <laughs> of course he has. Oh, free hives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're if we're looking to expand. <laughs> Additional ground crew, qualified ground crew might be useful. He's, he's going to watch yeah. the other planes go, and then he's going to hightail out. Man, it's got to suck walking home when you don't have a plane to fly home in. <laughs> I'm assuming he's heading out as far as the hotel that he's staying in while his plane is repaired. <laughs> I'm not sure if his plane is repairable. <laughs> Will he put it down in one? I say one piece. Um. He put, he put it down without power. The engine's the the main part that's uh, that took the hits. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, he he is out of the races entirely and incredibly cheesed off. And just say right, yeah, fine, have fun, I'm off, bastards. So, race morning. race morning. Each of the groups are lined up in their threes for a formation takeoff. Because they're clearly making a show of the last race. Um, there's press there to watch the takeoffs. They've requested everyone do formation takeoffs. So for the, the first group goes, um, they head off. Um, yours is the third group to go. So you see already two formation takeoffs sequence before yours. We got time to, to sit by the uh, um, <clears throat> hangers with a cocktail, watching waving the others away. <laughs> <laughs> so um, fly, uh, piloting role for formation takeoff. Because you That's know at sick. least one of one series of pictures from the formation takeoff are going to be in tomorrow's papers. Yeah. So nothing special, just a um, meat and potatoes formation takeoff there, I think, for the six. Okay. So, same from the others. And then the race is on. Race is on. Sorry. So. Pilot roll for um, A. Assuming you want to get there first, getting to getting speed on the other two, and then flying through the zeppelin hangar. See, I'm, I'm imagining Honestly, Chuck basically gunning it the entire time and never slowing down and just doing it all as fast as possible. Yeah. Honestly, I think I am. I'm racing the course, not the other planes in this instance. Yeah. But I am doing the course at, uh, you know, the upper end of the speed I think I can do it at. But it is going to be, um, I'm not going to be worrying about where I am in position to the others. I'm only going to be worrying about how fast can I take this individual. Okay. Uh, please. But what I am going to do, because it's the easiest one of the entire thing, is I'm going to show off slightly for the Zeppelin hanger. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go through the Zeppelin hanger upside down. Okay. Oh, God. Um, am I making basically support roles using navigation in order to improve his chances by giving him a heads up as to what when he's going where? And... So uh, yes, you can do that. Recommended um, speed. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that that's going to apply so much for the zeppelin hanger because that's the first thing right there. In yeah. Front of me. Look, I'm going up and flying through that zeppelin hanger. It's then what order is everything in? Yeah. And there, how should I take them after that? But yeah. That seems like a, a, a reasonable use of your time. Yeah. Okay, so Zeppelin hanger. Upside so down. Rolling so to the Zeppelin hanger. Minus one, because you're upside down. Okay, so that's a seven. Uh, okay. Not quite the raise. <laughs> well, still more stylish than the other two. Hey. Well, they, they made the mistake of going through the right way up, you see. <laughs> no, <that's not> a... <laughs> now, the needle loop. Do you think, having studied the map, you can hug the 
canyon wall and make it round? Or do you want to fly it, take it safe and just fly round it at altitude? You know, I kind of want to split the difference, but that's going to count as hugging the canyon wall, really, isn't it? Yeah, there, there is. The, it's either wall yeah. or not wall. Yeah. I don't want to push it too hard, but I'm still going for the wall. He's got to go out and back in different directions. Does this mean that he has to follow to the right or left on the way out? Yes, there is a, a marked course. You go in one okay. side, out the other. Okay. So you're not going to meet another plane coming the other way. Yeah. They so, did at least think of that well, one. Well, actually... No, I'm going to have to... Have, I was about to say, let's actually be reasonable about this. Which is actually the faster way through it, since this is a race. But no, this is Midas. He has to hug the candy wall. He's a hot shot. I can't really not do it. I Go took the it. hindrance. Yeah. I've got to play it. It's a nine, though. That is a nine. That is a race. That's with a race. So with a quick check in your review mirror, as you watch both um, Dale and Dag climb to take the corner... You, you come in along the canyon wall, hugging that thing, it's inches away from the bed of the aircraft. You get to the end, you pull back on the stick hard, and winging, winging ground effect takes over, and you coast around the inside of the canyon wall. Lovely. Coming That's out full speed. Like. That's what we like. You know, if you'd gone a little bit closer, you could have, like, rolled along the canyon wall a little bit as if you were landing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't want to damage another wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so coming coming out now, clearly ahead of the other two, this was the faster way round it. Mm. Camera flip. <laughs> Kick the camera. <laughs> and the, the next one was the airplane hangar. So coming back across the airfield. I'm going to do the airplane hangar normal i'm not i'm not doing that one upside down that's a trickier maneuver <laughs> at some point i shall fire up the, the pc game and show you exactly where the um inspiration for the needle loop came from yeah i have a feeling i've seen you flying it <laughs> you have mm. <laughs> yes, i think your i've seen you fly it into a wall i've done that too yes yeah but fish yeah you, uh, assuming you need my, to get the camera my, my camera looks fine at my end it's not is it not at the other end? No. Mm. Weird. Flip at my end, it's absolutely fine. And it's it's shown at my end previously. I'll mess with it, but it's looking fine for me. So mm. weird. Chuck breezes yeah. through the airplane hangar. Dag clips the edge of his wing on the on the hangar door as he's flying through. Ooh. But saves mm -hmm. it. But makes it through it. Cool. Dale again flies through clean as. Not as stylish as uh, as Chuck, but does ne nevertheless make the roll. And then it's looping round, heading back out to the coast to go under the bridge. Yeah. So. The bridge. The bridge strikes, strikes me as a place where I could do with that navigational assistance. If you felt like making a roll to give me a plus one, I would be fine with that. So, yes. Rolling He's not necessarily been paying any attention to what you've been no. saying up until now, apart from reminding him wh what event is coming yeah. up next. But the bridge is a tricky one. Okay, so my black, my, my black one? That's not black. I was thinking heavy and my brain went to black hole. <laughs> so it's my metal die, which is gold, not black. Roll the six. I'll get back to you in a sec. Ten. So that's a raise. That's a raise. That's, a raise. that's, a raise. that's plus, plus one to your roll. Plus one. Plus one per raise. Oh, yeah. That's oh, plus yeah, one per success. Oh, sorry. No, you're right. Plus two, because you get the success yeah. and the raise. My bad. It right, is plus two. Okay, okay. so get plus two. I'll actually remember to add this to the roll this time, rather than do it manually. Coming in at a ten. Nice. Very nice. That does come in with the raise then. Yeah. So I'd have had the raise without, but I still I would, I'm glad to have got the uh, the bonus just in case. Mm. Right. 
So, yeah. Dag the Mad cuts it very, very close to the, the water as he comes in under the bridge. And, um, again, catching a brief glance in your rearview mirror, you think possibly Dale may have kissed the water with, with his wing? With their wing, sorry. Um, but again, saved it. But made it through. Very close. Both those planes are likely coming back damaged. <laughs> I haven't had to rescue anyone from wreckage yet, have I? No, nope. no. You, you... Thank God. Well, not on this run, anyway. We nope. don't know about the others. I, I, yeah. I, I, for, I was for asking those, about... For those monitoring the, the previous runs, um, several planes have um, bottled it and called it quits at various points along the way. Like, no, nah, I'm not even trying that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no planes have crashed. Everyone's been sensible enough to know when something is beyond them. Yes. Than push it and crash. Oh, now they're being sensible. Yeah, the, the, the non-sensible people are all on this run. <laughs> Either all on this run or already out of the running because they were not sensible. Because they weren't sensible. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. So that, you've that, got first race, out... that first race knocked out a bunch of non-sensible. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Screaming down the coast. And the barn is clearly marked. The doors are half open. Half Ooh. open. You are not going to fit through flat. Yeah. <laughs> How tall is the barn? Am I going to flip fit through if I don't go flat? I mean... Um, it, you've got to go through at an angle. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go vertically, you're not going to fit. If you go flat, that's... you're not going to fit. Yep. Wait, how... With this... Well, that sucks for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got the shortest wingspan here. I was thinking, thinking about the size of me? your fuselage. Your fuselage is huge. Not really, it's just the plane is so small it looks huge. How detailed is the map and the plan? Pretty. So I can work out, I can have rather worked out angle. Oh. Which I can communicate. But I don't think it's detailed it's enough. It's not to that show detailed, them. no. No. Oh, okay. No. So piloting rollfish. Okay, yeah. I'm hoping, because I'm on an open, um, because I'm. I'm ahead of the other two planes mm. uh, hoping that they are monitoring what would be the uh, air traffic control frequency rather than a, a private frequency uh, Chuck is going to comment on the fact that the doors are half closed mm -hmm. well look at that the doors are, half, are, are partly closed that's going to make this really tricky to manoeuvre <laughs> Oh man! Give them a heads up on the way in that this needs to be done. Just out of a sense of fair play. Mm. Yeah, Dale's not going to be able to pull that one off. Oh. Because his wingspan is really, yeah. really broad. Okay, so uh, I got an eight, which is one raise. I'm hoping that that is going to be enough. Could it spend is. A, a Benny on this, but I'm hoping that that is enough. Will do it. Oh. Squeeze through. That was bloody close. Notice roll, please. <laughs> oh. uh, notice roll because, hey, there's a whole bunch of shit in here. It's a booby trap. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you go flying out the other side. Wires. Then the gate started me. Well, looky, looky, looky. The other thing you noticed was lots of people taking pictures as you were flying through. <laughs> you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say someone was stacking this against me. He says, throwing Nelly into a barrel roll as he continues along the <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... Turning right at the coast, head, heading towards the docks, you can see clearly marked the uh, the dock crane, which has yeah. the legs you're flying through. Not been looking forward to the dock crane. That's, you've got to go vertical. It is not. Yeah. It is not wide enough 
to go through any any other way than vertical. Yeah. A well timed barrel roll, just like. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that would increase the difficulty. He would yeah, need. I... A couple of I am not doing anything to increase the difficulty on this one. It is quite hard enough. <laughs> Wait a minute! Own. I thought I thought this guy was a hot shot. Yeah, this guy is a hot shot. However, <laughs> I barrel rolled on the way towards this. I'm going to try and time the barrel roll so I come out of it as I'm lining up. So rather than barrel roll, fly <laughs> forward, line up for the crane. Come out of the barrel roll, lining up for the uh, um, the crane. Okay. I'm sorry, fish. I just want to watch you crash. I mean, succeed. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. <laughs> However, I got a 13 anyway, so that's two raises. That is See? two raises. That would have been enough could... to barrel roll through it. Yeah. But I didn't want to be uh, that um, cheeky because I didn't trust myself. I mean, that that's an explosion on a D12 to get that. But yeah. It's typical that's... me, though. It's an explosion on a, a D12 one. followed by a one. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless. So, looking in your review mirror, you see um, Dale, again, go rotated and fly through. Dag didn't quite make the rotation. Oops, His is. wing clips the, the, the leg heavily. Ow. You see a chunk of the wing fly off and his plane start heading towards the sea at an angle. Pilot down, pilot down. I'm on it. As you're watching his plane plummet into the wet, there's something else further out to sea that you can see there's a vessel coming clo coming closer into land and there's an aircraft on its deck that's launching be awkward yeah I'm almost certain they're not in the race uh Midas to Madonna can I request that you put the map down, get in your plane, and get in the goddamn air? Because it looks like there's somebody coming in, and it looks like an attack vector. Uh, <laughs> Might want to warn the uh, Brits as I well, think. since their uh, pilot is out there on the same course as you at the moment. Okay, um, I'm. Uh, well, no, he's in the water. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I'm headed for the. I thought it was Dale that was in the no, water. No, it's the Brit that's in the water. Yeah, Dad. Uh, yeah, I will head for the maquette at a okay. rate of knots. Um, coming coming across the radio um, on the frequency used by the racers is a very, very broad Welsh voice. Hello. Whichever one I of assume. you racing gets happens to have been down to the wreck of the Sea Witch. Just come out here and hand over the goods. I thought there was a need to uh, be angry with this person. We Thank didn't. you from Midas. Uh, I need some bullets handy and an immediate refuel. I want to be on the ground and back in the air armed, uh, armed to play as soon as possible. I'm pushing the maquette. Yeah. I feel like this race is been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this uh, person is threatening the race. And therefore, in the interest of sportsmanship, I am going to shoot them down. <laughs> I am referee. <laughs> we get enough pitch. <laughs> daka, daka. Madonna has great interest in fairness in competition. Uh, for example, we won competition to uh, find the sea witch. <laughs> so therefore, it's only fair we keep. Also, we're only keeping the portion that wasn't asked to be given. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> find us keepers. We found that we keep it. We, yeah. The documents, that's all theirs. It's torn up, but we're finding a way to, you know, fix it. Don't complicate <laughs> matters. He does not deserve explanation. He is not paying us. Here, please take this it's not his ship. <laughs> Incoming aircraft. This is Midas of the Bad Debt. 
I think you're talking about our guys there, so just a little bit of a wing waggle to identify himself. So you want to come find me, you know where I'm going to be <laughs> and uh, continue on the course. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was the last obstacle. The remaining, all that remains yeah, for I know, you but to I'm do heading, is cross the finish Taking the line. correct route back to the... Um, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be disqualified. I'm taking the correct route back to the uh, yeah, yeah, kill. kill. <laughs> okay, how long is it going to take me to get um, to range with this guy? Not long. Um, they're not that far out. Following me, and I'm heading straight towards ah. you. <laughs> yeah, and there, there's more aircraft coming off of that the deck of that vessel. Oh, excellent. How many are we talking and what kind of aircraft? That's a question I'll answer next time. Yeah, I'd have been if you wanted to say that. There's always one. Oh, come on, boss. I can't do the boss fight at 10 past 10. No, uh, no, no. It's a bit no, late for the, the final flight, isn't it? No. Oh, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, not much I can do about the boss fight. You'd be surprised. You've got guns. Um, oh, good. The maquette has a turret. Yes. Ah, also but true. the maquette's already in the air. I am on the ground with the yes. gyro. The gyro you're doesn't on. have guns. But you're on the no. ground when when Madonna is getting ready to launch. Yeah, the, so the gyro does the question, have guns. Oh, the gyro does have guns? You could take the gyro up to its back yeah. then, yeah. Does that mean I'm being forced to stand in the turret? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you Robinson, be you've been co-opted gunner. for turret use. Yes. <laughs> Iron Maiden song. Oh god, oh god, I'm going to die. <laughs> so this is it. We're going to die. Nonsense. When have you ever known me to fly dangerously? Is this Look a trick this question? I, I feel like if I answer this truthfully, I'll lose my head, and if I don't answer this truthfully, I'm going to lose my head. Statistically speaking, Merlin, we have a 100% uh, record of not dying. <laughs> I believe this is what they call survivor bias. <laughs> Look, you're immortal until proven otherwise. That's just the fact. Interesting thing about survivor bias. We, we may have discussed it previously, but during World War II, they were analysing bullet patterns on the aircraft that came back and thinking about armouring those areas mm. until someone said... Those are the areas you don't need to armour. <laughs> exactly. You need to yeah. armour the areas that... Of the, the, the aircraft yeah, that didn't the come that back. The got hit on the planes that, that didn't come back. Yeah, put the armor yeah. where these bullet holes aren't. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. And uh, survivor bias was exactly what that was. Yeah. So Madonna gets to do some shit in it. Yes. Oh, yes. It's the session. Excellent. So, I was doing fine. Fly, he then threatened I'm us. Happy fish. Yeah, you got to do some silly racing. <laughs> some awesome flying. <laughs> I am, however, awesome sticking flying. with I didn't want to be cheeky it being and, an indication of your yeah. possession by pod person. <laughs> and I got to take out a plane with my wheels. So yes! I, I am definitely hanging on to that one. Okay, so we now need Shard and Merlin to land on people because I landed on someone and put them <laughs> yeah, on the ground. It's, it's Actually, a right of passage ground. on the bad deck. You're not a true member yeah. of the bad deck crew until you've landed on another plane. <laughs> yes! <laughs> exactly. In mid air, obviously. It's easy mode if you do it well. I'm, I'm planning, there. when I get the plane that I want, I'm planning on having Merlin upgrade it so that I can latch onto other planes to remove people that need to be medevaced. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we talking magnets or are we talking cables? Both. Okay. You gotta have the magnets to, to to stay attached to the plane, and you need the cables it's to winch people out. It's like Thunderbird 2, isn't it? Just I was going to say, basically, yes. It's gonna just have a hollow middle it for is. the plane you're picking up. Yeah. <laughs> kidnap people mid-air. And Sage goes straight to kidnapping. Well, <laughs> yeah. I possibly may have been thinking along the same lines, but that's fine. I, I mean, I'll have to stream some Crimson Skies in Discord at some point. Yes, <laughs> I think Absolutely. I've still got it installed from last time. Cool. It is a, a fun-looking game. It's a lot. It is a lot of fun. So we are wrapping there, story-wise, for the night, mm -hmm. which means that yes, we will run into 
I suppose, three weeks' time, which would be, yep. what date would that be for? What should be the finale now? Uh, 28th. Yes. No worries, Grano. Thank you for hanging out with us. Other yes, than, thank you indeed. Other than the fact that it's an established um, pattern at the moment, given that we have gaps in the other uh, slots, if other if alternative games cannot be found, is there a possibility you could oh, run yeah. it earlier? And could we all make it earlier? I, if, if need be, I just, can run this next week, all the week after. Just or purely thinking in terms of if there is a, if there is a gap in the schedule, rather than have have no stream, yeah. is it possible? To Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Like yeah. Have the extra time to, to get another game in there. Definitely. Yeah. Next week is going to be Labyrinths and Lycanthropes. I love Labyrinths and Lycanthropes. Just, I will not be happy though unless there are hairdressing lizard men in it, because that to me is that's the the, the abiding memory of Labyrinths and Lycanthropes with the hairdressing lizard men. Look, it's not my fault. I rolled that three separate dungeons. <laughs> so I'm I'm thinking about um, I was looking at uh, all out of bubblegum and um, uh, honey heist as one shot to potentially run, but I have to think up an idea for them that are not overly complex so they can be a one shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the problem with one shots, isn't it? Mm. Never yeah. Are. So, and folks, I hope uh, both players and viewers have enjoyed the racing this evening. Um, now, some of us, um, both myself and some of the folks playing here, are streamers in our own right. Um, I'll be playing my drums on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, from five o'clock UK time. So if music is your thing and you feel like requesting some songs, stop on by. Um, Drut, I know streams. Yep. What have you got coming up? Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be playing Vampire with a Y, uh, following a poor vampiric doctor around plague-ridden London. So way, way too accurate for current conditions. And then Thursday, I will be carrying on with Thronebreaker Witcher Tales. Cool as stuff. I gallop towards the end game there. Fish, do you have any games coming up for stream, either on Twitch or Discord? Right, I will not be streaming imminently because, as some of you know, I'm currently in a little bit of a transitional period with regards to my um, accommodation. Hence, I'm <laughs> streaming this from Drutz Living Room. But I do have plans when I get settled to be doing more with my channel. So for the cool. first time in a very, very long time, I am going to actually, instead of saying, no, don't worry about me, say, yeah, if you're not already following me and you want to see me doing some video games or I want to start bringing tabletop RPG content back to my channel, then do please give me a follow on Fish Not Fish so that you can find it when I do stream it. I have to say, Fish, at least you're not streaming from a dead room. This is true. Robinson, what have you got coming up stream-wise? Uh, so I've had internet troubles for the past week and haven't been able to stream at all. And instead of getting back into it immediately, I'm going to wait because X4 has an update coming out. Factory yes. has an update coming out. <laughs> oh, and just out of interest, uh, Elite Dangerous has an alpha coming out at yes. the end of this mm. month. So, uh, the three of the people here play Elite Dangerous, and I'm pretty certain has bought the expansion that that is the Alpha 4, so I don't know what, you, what ju hoops you have to jump through to get into that Alpha. But it's there is a possibility... Alpha Sorry? You need the Deluxe Alpha version uh, right. expansion. Don't think I've I don't bothered with that. Else. Else. I could only afford the normal. Likewise. Yeah, no, I've only got the normal, but if there's an upgrade, then you never know, maybe somebody might expect... It's much easier to get these sorts of things in two stages, if you see what I mean. You know, buy it and then later upgrade it because you're not paying the whole thing out in one go. So you never know. But if not, anyway, um, Elite Dangerous is a really cool game. Look out for people who are streaming the yes. alpha of uh, Odyssey, which will be Elite Dangerous getting to the uh, a first person shooter. Yes. Running around on, to that. on planets, planets with a thin atmosphere, which we haven't been allowed on before. Yeah. And uh, last one, I'm Lee Shard. What have you got coming up? I'm planning in an hour or so to uh, stream Hollow Knight again. Um, I, I typically I typically stream 
uh, after this stream and then either Tuesday or Wednesday and sometimes both about the same time. Um, but didn't get to it this week. So. Yeah, it happens. Cool, so if you like what, what you've seen here, what we do here, then you can get involved in what we do by um, joining us in Discord, hanging out here. Um, we recruit for um, one shots and other games, both on stream and off stream from Discord. And if you want to help us keep the lights on and keep things going, then you can uh, drop us a tip by doing an exclamation point donate in the channel. And um, yeah, no, no, no donation is ever required, but uh, always very, very well. No donation is welcomed. ever refused either. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> very much welcomed if, if, if someone does. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Good everyone. Night. Bye. Thank you.